Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to Austin Hubbard for presenting the American flag for tonight's pre-race ceremonies. That concludes our Dirt Draft opening ceremonies and our salute to country. We'll go to a brief commercial on Flow Racing and be back with our opening qualifying heat races. PDRSpeed.com offers a complete line of oval track speed equipment. Jeremy Slazic trying to make a bid for the two spot. Products like All Star Performance, Fitnell Racing Products, Barron's Performance, Burt Transmissions, DMI, Falco, Penske, Motor State, JLR Technologies, TV12 Race Products, and more. Jeremy Slazic, your modified winner. Our online store makes parts ordering easy and convenient from anywhere at any time. PDRSpeed.com, speed at your fingertips. Ollie's deals are so good, you won't believe the prices. Can this crap be real? This has to be a joke. It's no, no joke. No, no. This store is amazing. You have to see it for yourself. Ollie's Bargain Outlet sells famous brand name merchandise at up to 70% off the fancy store prices. Bargains on housewares, toys, bed and bath, books, food, gifts, and so much more. Hurry in to get the deals now, because when they're gone, they're gone. Ollie! Good stuff, cheap! Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. We are the number one Renegade Toter Home dealer and the number one Intech and Bravo Sprint Car Trailer dealer. No one sells more Toter Homes and Sprint Car Trailers than we do. Check out our complete lineup at CapitalRenegade.com. If you're in the market for a Toter Home or a trailer, trust the people that are in the pits with you and that support the sport. Since 2016, Dig Race Products has had a sole focus on Northeast dirt modified shocks and suspension tuning. Located centrally in New York, Dig is the industry leader in at track shock and setup support. This hands on at the track approach is what guides the design and development in delivering the highest quality shock absorbers to the dirt oval track market. 
Take your program to the next level and feel the difference on DIG. Welcome back to All Tech Raceway. Heat number one of four rolling out onto the racetrack now. On night number three of the Sunshine Swing presented by Capital Custom Coaches and Trailers. Here at All Tech Raceway, first of four heat races for the Short Track Super Series Modifieds. Top three will redraw, top five will qualify. Here's your starting lineup for heat race number one, pole position. Out of East Greenbush, New York, in the Killer Crate Products, number 97, Bobby Hackle, the fourth, and alongside of him in the H Blades HVAC Services, number 65, out of Federalsburg, Maryland, Austin Hubbard. Third starting spot out of Sprakers, New York, the Helmer International, Bart Contracting, 44, Stuart Friesen, and alongside of him out of Three Rivers, Quebec, the Genic, Belmar Excavating, 35, Francois Belmar. Row three on the inside, the Quality Forestry Management, number 28 from Roscoe, New York. Michael Troutchold alongside of him from the Shannock Station, New Jersey. In the Ace Materials, number six, Matty Ice, Matt Stangle. Final row, the Mike Hans Trucking, 22J out of Rutland, Vermont, Bubba McPhee. And alongside of him, the Nardozzi Construction and Paving, 70A, Alex Payne out of Canandaigua. Green flag is out. Heat number one is underway. Charging into the turn, night number three of racing for the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. Sunshine swing at all. Tech Raceway takes the green down the back straight away. Austin Hubbard's got the hammer down the big block under the hood of the Blaze. HVAC services 65 sets the pace. Yeah, Hubbard, that's exactly what he wanted with that big block. He wanted a tacky, fast racetrack. Hubbard's got it right now and out in front. Hackle second, Friesen third. Battle back here going on for the fifth spot. Francois Belmar. Has the final transfer spot. Here's Friesen going after Hackle for second. Right behind Belmar, we've got Stangle and another big block. The 78, Alex Payne. Payne trying to catch up to Matt Stangle. Again, you've got Friesen working on Hackle. They are both in redraw spots. Mike Trouchel fourth. Francois Belmar rounds out the top five. Austin Hubbard a long way out in front. Oh, Hackle bobbles. Friesen dives underneath of him. Move Friesen into the runner-up spot. Reason. Just like last night when you said you can't make a mistake when those guys are behind you. Hackle had the nose shoved just a second and Friesen drove right by. Trout showed a solid fourth and Belmar's getting company now from Matty Ice. Yeah, you said it, Jeff Francois. Belmar's got Matt Stangle closing in on him. The two of them had contact early on in last night's feature. Stangle's got problems. The six of Stangle slows right in front of the 70A of Alex Payne. And Payne, I believe, is broken in the left front. Stangle spins and the yellow lights are on, but Alex Payne, I believe, with a broken left front shock, maybe a little bit more than that, certainly looks like suspension damage on the 70A. Yeah, I don't know if Alex wasn't didn't catch the fact that Stangle was slowing or what, but he tagged St him. Stangle was heading to the infield, and all of a sudden... Uh, Payne clipped him and spun him right around there. The one thing you'd say is Stengel was, uh, you know, entered kind of in the middle of the racetrack. I don't think he was expecting uh, Stengel to be slow right in the middle of the track, but that's where Stengel was. And so the six is rotten. Week continues. Remember, had a front axle break uh, last night in hot laps, able to make it out for the heat race. But he won his heat race, <laughs> even though he, he had the lousy warm-up. Hey, we got a special guest with us here in the booth, Chris. Who's this guy over here? I think he'd probably call us the guest. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the awesome voice of Alltech Raceway, Joe Kelly. I'm special, all right, guys. <laughs> yeah. Great racing. I uh, wasn't able to be here last night, but I watched the highlight reel. And, man, what a, what a good feature last night here. Guys racing for the lead, side-by-side -side action. We're seeing some of that right, right now. One question I have for you guys. How many big blocks are in the field here like weekend. big block motors, you mean? Yes, or how big many? block motors, actual big block Out motors. Out of the 32, I'm going to say probably about five or six. Mm -hmm. So they're most running the, the big, big small, small block. blocks. Big yeah. small blocks, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Awesome. And you've got a few. And you got two of them in this race here, the 78 yep. who just went off and the 65 at big blocks on them. We're ready for the restart. Leader picks the top lane. That is Austin Hubbard with Friesen alongside. There's where you want to keep an eye. Trouchill gets a good jump here on the start. 
Trouchold sneaks around Bobby Hackle, and just like that, Mike Trouchold into a BA Custom Headers redraw spot, and McPhee gives Belmar a shot, and that might not have been an accident. Yellow lights, we're going to come across to complete the lap, and the yellow lights are going to come on. I don't think McPhee forgot what happened last night. Yeah, that's not very good. Not very good. Uh, don't go there, push truck. Oh, I told you. Yeah, last night in the feature, Belmar and McPhee got hooked together going into turn three, and McPhee ended up against the concrete, and now McPhee made a pass on Belmar here in the heat, and Belmar ends up against the concrete. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, it's a little give and take going on, I guess. Uh, fender, a little bit of fender to fender discussion going on there, and it was uh, it was kind of obvious. Yep. Yeah, Belmar pushed up a little bit, yeah. left the door open, and McPhee got underneath of him. And sometimes you see a guy lift in that situation, but I think McPhee, at the very least, you'd say remembered last night and didn't lift. Yeah. yeah. And there you see right front to left front, Belmar's nose hopped in the air, and into the wall he went. Not a, the way he wanted to celebrate his birthday. He no. made the redraw last night, Joe. He had such a good night, did Francois. Yeah. He made the redraw, and he said, I just want to say in advance – he wanted to talk to everyone at home, and he said it, it was his birthday today. So we wish him a happy birthday, but now he's on the hook. Yeah, terrible way to uh, get the evening started here. Now, we, we mention this every year, but, you know, folks that are watching back home, you're the announcer here at Alltech, but you have a great history here with Modifieds because you come originally from the state of New Jersey, so you used to get to see Modified racing back in the early years. I did. I, I miss Modifieds and pizza. Pizza? Okay. Yeah, modified some pizza because you, you don't get either down here. I mean, you yeah. get pizza, but it's kind of not, not like not, not like what you get at home, guys. No. Yeah. No. Uh, I have to get my pizza from Dave Portnoy. So that's, Me and my girlfriend watch his videos all the time. <laughs> Every time I see one of his videos, it makes me angry because I all of a sudden want to go there and try the pizza. <laughs> so, yeah, there's uh, there's actually a couple he went to up by Utica Rome Speedway yeah. where we're at. And so we hit one of those up, uh, Slice Pizza. Did in you, Utica, did you get the so. did you get the app, Chris? Yeah, uh, no, she has it. Yeah, girlfriend you, has it. Did I you do not. the review? You know, no, <laughs> we should. Yes, I'll put. I'll get Allison on it. We'll okay. leave some pizza reviews. Allison, what? she's been busy all night. Yeah, she's doing some social media stuff for some guys. Here we go, Hubbard and Friesen alongside again. Hackle, Trout, Chol, and McPhee. Five left, five qualified, but three go to the redraw. So we got to keep this heat race going. And Hubbard outguns Shepard again on a restart. And Hackle outguns Trouchold. The best place to be on a restart when the leader chooses the top is fourth. Hackle taking advantage just like Trouchold did. He takes the third spot away. Now Trouchold washes up the track. McPhee's going to drive by as Friesen tries to zero in on Hubbard up front. Yeah, it looks like Friesen's got that line figured out down there in turns number two. He's going to drive the car in hard here in three and four. But Hubbard's got that big block just pinned down one lap to go here at Alltech Raceway for the big block modified out front. Yeah, we got the Bears Performance Warehouse white flag one to go. Friesen trying to move in there on Hubbard. Will he be able to get him? Hubbard with a good run down the back straightaway and into three and four for the final time. One more smooth corner. For the Maryland native, he drifts wide. Friesen gets a nose underneath of him. Hubbard holds off Friesen at the line. Austin Hubbard wins heat number one for the modified. Stork Friesen and Bobby Hackle are through to the BA Custom Headers redraw. Bubba McPhee fourth, and Mike Trouchel gets the fifth and final transfer spot. Belmar, Payne, and Stangle will go to the Concy. So Austin Hubbard, Stuart Friesen, and Bobby Hackle will be in the BA Custom Headers redraw. Bubba McPhee and Mike Troutschold are also your qualifiers. A little more action in Heat 1 than we've seen in the two previous nights, but here's your lineup now for Heat Race number 2. Pole position in the Dry Zone Racing Development 35 from East Canaan, Connecticut is Chris Curtis. Alongside of him out of Ransomville, New York, in the National Maintenance Contracting Corporation, high mark number 25, Eric Rudolph. Third row inside out of Middletown, New York, Wurtsboro, New York, it should be. Wurtsboro, New York, driving in the Stefersky Paving, Shackleton Auto and Truck Parts, Acura Collision, Apopito Beach, Florida, 16X, Danny Creedon. Fourth starting spot out of Rochester, another Shackleton Auto and Truck Parts entry, the Sunrise Insulation, Lanes Yamaha, 27J, the Dr. Danny Johnson. Fifth spot out of Horseheads, New York, the Outlaws Speedway, 
friendly Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram 5 star, the boss man Tyler Seary. Sixth starting spot out of Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, the Charlie Lord owned 01C Design Concepts and Enterprises car, Tanner Van Doren. Seventh spot driving in the Raymond Construction 29J, Julian Raymond. And Gene Matthew Raymond in the Two Brothers Racing number 38 car. Eight number two, again eight laps will take five to the feature, three to the redraw into the turn, and Eric Rudolph will grab the lead. Yeah, Rudolph quickly goes marching out in front. Here comes Danny Creedon, the quick timer in this group, trying to get a run to the inside of Chris Curtis for second. Tyler Seary back there fighting with TVD. Oh, Curtis way sideways up on the top side. He'll lose a few more spots. The doctor slides by for a redraw spot now. Into the turn, Curtis, who got out of shape in three and four, gets a little high in one and two. Tanner Van Doren goes by Curtis for that last qualifying spot. Leading the way still is Aaron Rudolph. Running in the number two spot right now is Danny Creeden. And third, the last redraw spot is Danny Johnson being chased by a guy he used to drive for, Tyler Seary. Yeah, Tyler Seary's got a good car right here, but he drifts up. Coming out of turns number two, almost contact with the ball. We'll watch Danny Johnson here. He holds on to that transfer position. TBD taking advantage of Siri's mistakes, quickly closing in on the five-star. Siri, though, better through three and four, opens up a little bit of daylight. How about it? The doctor been struggling this week. He's just five laps away from a BA Custom Headers redraw spot. Siri's got to run him down a second and a half, the difference between the two. Rudolph's got a pretty good lead right now. Rudolph has been in the redraw every night so far, but he has not yet had a top five. Top tens, but no top five. He is a former winner on the Sunshine Swing and a $10,000 winner at that. Here they come, Eric Rudolph still leading. I'll tell you, I'm watching Eric Rudolph's times. 18, 6 2, 3 around All Tech Raceway. He's in the 18 second bracket. He's flying around this big half mile here. Yeah, he is absolutely getting it, averaging 18.8 seconds a lap. So he is ripping. Oh, we got one. Looks like breaking on the front straightaway. Just looped it all on his own on the home straightaway. That's the 29 of Julian Raymond. Yellow lights will come on. And I don't know if he got loose off of four and it, just trying to save it that happened. or It almost looks something like something broke. locked up. Yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Hopefully he didn't rip up our Bob Hilbert Sportswear banner. <laughs> Bob, Bob, you'll have to send us a new one. <laughs> Chris will let you know if it got tore or not tomorrow. Yeah. Well, we have a backup out by the road right now. Guys did a really good job decorating the track. Everything looks beautiful. Thank you. That was an all-day Monday yep. and part of the day Tuesday job. I'm sure. And it rained a little bit on you guys too, didn't yep. it? Yep. Uh, well, we avoided Sunday. Sunday was a rainy, wet day. So, yeah. So, we did some on Monday. Tried to avoid the wet stuff. Yeah. So, we did some Monday. And as Jeff said, came back, did some Tuesday on practice day. And... uh so, like I said, it's one of my favorite trips of the year. Yeah. We can, you know, relax, take our time, get everything done, make the place look nice, and then we have a fun week at one of our – all of our favorite racetracks. Well, I, I can tell you, you guys are really good as a, as a team. I call you the dynamic duo. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you it's guys a, we do appreciate a great job. It. It's fun when you like what you do. Oh. Siri just lost a wheel cover, I think. Yeah, there it is. It's stuck right in the track. <laughs> oh, boy. I think, gonna, yep. Yeah, we've got to go yellow for that. That is debris. Look like one of those UFO flying saucers there. <laughs> I saw it come off the tire, and you never know where that thing's going to go. Hopefully we can get a camera to it before Nick. Uh, Nick just ripped it out of the ground. Scott yeah. Bloomquist just arrived on that UFO. Yeah. <laughs> so the what? doctor, he'll be happy with this. Oh, Siri and... I don't know what's going on here. We got a little bit of a dispute going on up front here. Creedon and Siri are rubbing wheels here. Danny Johnson's in there. There's a report from one of the officials that something might be sparking on Danny Johnson's car. Possible just brakes. We saw that from Tanner Van Doren as yeah. well. Possible just brakes. I but think Siri's disputing he wants the spot. But we did not advance another lap, correct? Right. Hmm. Series director Brett Dale on the in-car radio, yeah. one way talking to the drivers. So Rudolph is the leader. After one lap is in, he has lane choice on a double-file restart. So he's been picking the top. Top has been quick here. 
Yeah. Green's been on the bottom. But, Joe, do when other divisions come here, do they oftentimes pick the top? It depends on track conditions. And, okay. And we're, we're straight up oh. double file start all the time right to the end. You know, we don't okay. do the Delaware double file starts here. And it just depends oh on goodness. track condition. Oh what is goodness. going on back here? The doctor's running into Danny Creedon. And then you got Tyler. And then he just got into Tyler Siri. Huh. I don't know what. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what precipitated all this, Chris. I mean, we. I don't. I don't know what. I don't know if Danny Creedon did something on that last restart to fire everybody up or what? Danny Johnson is apparently the one who's not happy about something. Yeah, well, you could see it clear as day here on Flow. The 27J was smoking the 16X's back bumper. And I think Siri might have just caught. No, look, Siri, Siri just made a hard left turn on Danny Johnson. Looks like, yeah, they're running into each other. Yeah, well, like I said, Danny Johnson used to drive for Tyler Siri. And there must be some after effects of that. Apparently, not, none that we knew of before, but something must have happened out here. But Siri just got around Danny on the restart, and now he's going after Creighton. Pacey better get ready after this heat's over. Well, the boys in the trailer, if we've still got a camera free, get it to the pit area because things are going to get interesting. I'd imagine back there, Siri in close quarters racing now with Creighton for the runner-up spot. The Barons Performance Warehouse white flag is out. One more trip around the speedway. Even though the checkered flag is going to come out here this time by, it we could see fireworks post-checkered. Rudolph working out of the corner. He'll win heat number two. Following Rudolph, we got Creed, then Siri, then Danny Johnson, who does not make the redraw but qualifies, and then Tanner Van Doren. Because Curtis, Gene, Matthew, Raymond, and Julian Raymond round out the field. Siri quickly hustles away. Creedon slowed up. I think Creedon says, get me the heck away from it. The doctor's now going to hustle over to Siri. Maybe. They've all got to go across the scales. They qualified. And the doctor hustles. He wants to go to the scale first. Yeah. So he can get back to the pits first and whatever. We'll give the lineup for heat number three and keep an eye on things here. 25 of Eric Rudolph won that heat. 16X Danny Green second. Five-star Tyler Siri third. They go to the redraw. 27J Danny Johnson fourth. And the 0-1C Tanner Van Doren gets the fifth spot. Here's your lineup. Heat three. Pole position will be the Charles Tibbetts Masonry. BDR Speed 0-1 Danny Varon out of fun in New York. Alongside of him out of Gilderland, the SNS Asphalt Paving. Boss Mechanical number nine, Mark Johnson. Second row inside driving in the FX Capra Honda number 99L out of Fulton, Larry White. Fourth starting spot out of St. Catharines, Ontario, the SNW Service Center number six, Money Matt Williamson. Starting fifth row, fifth spot inside third row, driving the MP delivery number 7Z out of Stanley, New York, Zach Payne. Alongside of him out of Pipersville, Pennsylvania, the BDR Speed CNS Equipment number six, Danny Buck. Starting from seventh spot, driving. In the Signworks Fleet Graphics number three junior, that is Seth Zacharias. And the final starting spot out of Goshen, New York, driving in the number 15M, the Schubach Sod Farms, Barron's Performance Warehouse 15 is Daniel Morgavitz. So uh, some exciting extra action here in the first two heat races. Heat three takes the green, and Mark Johnson's got the lead. Money Matt from fourth to third, but Larry White gets a good run down the back straight away. They'll go door to door for the final redraw spot. White throws it in sideways, slides up the racetrack. Danny Buck gets a big push. Buck was trying to get there. White and Williamson will continue to duke it out. We got a two-guard battle for the lead now. Johnson and Varon and Larry White battling now with Money Matt Williamson in a three-car battle behind them. They're all going at it. How about it there, uh, Joe? Yeah, good battle up front here. Mark Johnson's got it, and that car looks really good around the racetrack here. I'm watching Larry White in a 99. He was on fire here last night, and he's got a fast race car as well. Yeah, a couple of two-car battles. Larry White able to get by Matt Williamson for third, and now trying to run down the lead duo, and he is doing so and doing it quickly. Mark Johnson continues to lead. Danny Barrett stalking him, but they both might be sitting ducks because the 99L picking right up where he's left off the last two nights. Three-car battle shaping up for the lead. Varon right in the mix there. He's right behind Mark Johnson. He caught up to 
Johnson. Larry White's right behind him. Then Williamson, who struggled at times this week, is fourth. And now in fifth spot, Zacharias halfway home. Joe, we got a three-car duel for the lead. Yeah, we sure do. And Larry's just kind of laying back there, waiting to see what's going to happen here. I believe he's got a really good car in this middle groove down here in turns number three and four. We'll see what he does this time. He sets the car in there sideways. He's got that right rear planted where he wants. He's going to get a good run on the front straight away here. But looks like our leaders have got him covered right now. Yeah, top three settled into the BA Custom Headers redraw spots. Matt Williamson is fourth. Seth Zacharias has gotten by Danny Buck. That six car is evil right now for Buck. He sits, excuse me, outside of a transfer spot. White trying to get by Varon for the runner-up spot now. Down the straightaway, Varon keeping Larry White at bay. Larry's got two second-place finishes so far this week. Danny, Varon, Larry White battling for second and not that far behind the leader, Mark Johnson. Yeah, Varen's able to set the car and turn it coming out of four a little bit better than White. White, you can see now, has fallen back about three car lengths. Oh, well, Varen's going to take another stab at Mark Johnson here. Johnson's going to get off turn two. Final run down the back straightaway for your top two. Johnson will lead Varen into turns number three and four. He sets that car in these smooth, consistent laps, and it's going to win him a heat race here. Barron's performance warehouse white flag to the Sunoco checkered flag for Mark Johnson, Danny Barron, and Larry White. They are through to the BA Custom Headers redraw. Matt Williamson and Seth Zacharias are qualified for tonight's show. Again, all cars have to clear the scale, but it is Mark Johnson. Remember last night, Jeff drove to a redraw spot, broke a shock. Danny Varon blew a motor last night, the two of them into tonight's redraw now. Yep, Mark Johnson, the 9, the 01, Danny Varon, the 99L, Larry White, your top three go to the redraw six. Uh, Matt Williamson and the three junior of Seth Zacharias are your five qualifiers out of heat three. Heat number four lining up this way, pole position. The Blue Ox Energy 34 out of Oxford, New York is Rusty Smith. Alongside out of Langhorne, Pennsylvania, in the Scrappies Auto Services, Kelly's on bridge, number 11, Danny Heber. Row number two inside. He is two for two so far this week. The Herlock Automobile Speed, Westmoreland Golf Club, Kibble House Family, Elmo's Pit Stop, number 9S from Savannah, New York, Matt Shepard. Alongside out of Brisbane, Queensland, Australia, driving in the Pepsi Facts and Excavation 21A, the Batman, Peter Britton. Row three to the inside, driving the Jeremy Smith Racing Integra Shocks, number 12, from Binghamton, New York, Darren Smith. Sixth starting spot at a Quakerstown, Pennsylvania, driving in the Blenderman and Sons Recycling Beacon Build Production, number seven, Rick Lawbox. Starting from seventh out of Watertown, New York, driving the FX Caprera 4, number seven, Matt Caprera. And the final starting spot at a Fort Plain, New York, the Highland Enterprises, Schultz Auto 27, is Jason Riom. Eight cars, eight more laps, five more qualify, and three more to the BA Custom Headers redraw. Fourth of four heats for the Bob Hilber Sportswear Big Block, Small Block Modifieds, part of the Capital, Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. 2024 Sunshine Swing down the back straightaway into the turn. Batman's got second spot into the turn. Matt Shepard trying to gain the third spot. Can't get him. So Britton a second, Rusty Smith trying to hold on to that final redraw spot. Matt Shepard back there in fourth. Rick Laubach rounds out the top five out in front. How about Danny Heber? Heber checking out set and sail, Joe. Yeah, he looks good out front. I'm keeping my eyes on Shepard, though. He's, his car just seems to respond very well no matter where he plants it. Looking for three in a row here this weekend. Yeah, Shepard started third, but he fell back to fourth, and Rusty Smith has given him everything he can handle. Rick Laubach, the Quaker shaker, right there behind him, trying to catch. Oh, Shepard gets it pretty hot. Almost got into the back of Rusty Smith. That won't gain him any spots. Smith and Shepard and Laubach battle three, four, five. Track pretty fast right now and not super wide. Shepard, there it is, trying to get a run alongside Rusty Smith on corner entry there. Finally able to do it, able to drive around him off the corner, and Shepard moves into the third and final. BA Custom Headers redraw spot. Now further back, Rick Laubach has the final transfer spot. Darren Smith trying to get closer. Darren Smith's been in the top five each of the first two nights. Right now he's outside looking in on a qualifying spot. Danny Heber is way out in front, Joe. He's had not the greatest week so far this week, but that number 11 is really turning some good laps. Yeah, watching his lap times here, he's doing 
He's doing what he needs to do at All Tech Raceway, and that's be consistent each and every lap. That's what wins races here is consistency. It's easy to be fast one lap, but it's nice to be consistent, all eight of them. That gets you to victory lane. Danny Heber will come to the twin sticks. Two laps to go. Shepard might just be easing and biding his time right now, hanging out behind the 21A of Britain. Rusty Smith, Rick Laubach round out your qualified cars. You can see at the top of your screen the cars with the yellow crowns are the cars in qualifying positions. Heber coming to the Barron's Performance Warehouse, white flag. Final lap for Danny Heber down the straightaway. Britain has a comfortable advantage over Shepard. They are 2-3, then Smith, Laubach, Darren Smith not yet qualified. Final circuit, Danny Heber leading the way. Heber rounds through turns number three and four. Pete Britton with a good lap that last time, but Heber's going to bring it home. The 11-H in for the win. Peter Britton second, Matt Shepard third. Looks like the 34, Rusty Smith, and Rick Lawback in the fifth position. So your five qualifiers, the 11 of Danny Heber, an impressive run to take the win. 21A, Peter Britton second, 9S, Matt Shepard is third. They go to the redraw, 34, Rusty Smith is fourth. The 7 of Rick Laubach is fifth. So Austin Hubbard, Eric Rudolph, Mark Johnson, and Danny Heber are the winning drivers of our four big block, small block, modified qualifying heats for tonight's Capital Custom Coaches and Trailers Sunshine Swing night number three. All right, we had four heats for the Mighty Modifieds. Now four heats for the 602 Sportsman. Here's the way they will line up. Heat number one, pole position. Driving out of Drummondville, Quebec. In the other drum, Drummond number 21, Jan Boussier. Alongside of him, out of Upper Makefield, Pennsylvania, the Belmont's Garage. Hesser Chevrolet, 14, that's Joe Toth. Throw two inside in the... Madsen overhead doors, number 89 out of Spencertown, New York, Dylan Madsen. Fourth starting spot out of Southampton, New Jersey, driving in the Beacon Building Productions, ProTech Roofing, number 30 is Rob T. Starting inside of the third row, your current point leader in the Wagner Automotive Championship Chase out of South New Berlin, New York, in the Ted's Body Shop 14T, Peyton Talbot. Scheduled for the sixth spot out of Queechy, Vermont, the McGee Family Racing, McGeeCars.com. Number 813 is Jason Quenville. Seventh on the grid, driving out of South Plainfield, New Jersey, the Ellery's Restaurant Camp out Incorporated, 29, Matt Ellery. Final starting spot, the 142 of Justin Zook out of Milford, Delaware, their Milwaukee Tools. 142, Zook is not out there in the 30 of T. It looks like electing for the rear, so we slide a few cars up, and we go green here on heat number one for the sportsman. Out of the turn, Joe Totes got the lead down the back straightaway. Jan Boussier running in the number two spot. Following him quickly is Peyton Talbot. Talbot now moving from position five up to position number three. He's in the redraw. Dylan Madsen was supposed to have Rob Teed alongside of him. Instead, he gets the guy leading the points, Peyton Talbot. Talbot drives around him and into the redraw spot. And now Madsen, who's the quick timer in this group, is under fire for fourth, Joe. Yeah, really good racing right here. The 602s definitely have to keep that momentum up. It's a big difference from the modifieds here at All Tech Raceway. Watching Peyton Talbot, he's been really on fire the past couple of years. A young driver that's kind of coming along and friends with a couple of photographers here at All Tech Raceway as well. Talbot to the inside now battling Jan Boussier. Talbot's got the run to the bottom lane. Looks like he'll grab second out of the corner. Boussier third, Madsen fourth, and now Jason Quenville is in fifth. Madsen last night after the infraction and and warm-up started last in his heat and finished second. Pair of 14s occupying the top two spots. The dumpling, Joe Toth, leads the way. The 14T of Peyton Talbot, second for now. Jan Boussier, though, coming back after him. Boussier trying to make a bid to the inside here. We are in the second half of the heat race, and here comes the 89 of Dylan Madsen finding a rhythm and trying to reel in that duo. Yeah, Dylan Madsen's been kind of searching around back there, watching the battle up in front of him. I think he may have found something that he likes back there. We'll see if it if it if it builds anything here in the laps coming. Yeah, I'll tell you the leader Joe Toth is way out in front, but two, three, four, five are They're, sort of getting closer and closer, Joe. Yeah, Toth is out front. He's in a league of his own out there. I don't think he's lifted yet. And he's just kind of <laughs> he's just kind of cruising around all tech raceways on cruise control, the Belmont garage. 
Car number 14 looks really good out front tonight. You know, he's used to having success. The team works very hard. Sure. But they have been struggling mightily here. Practice night in the last two nights looks like they may have found something that has been working for them tonight. They are cruising right now. Talbot second and Boussier third with the Bears Performance Warehouse white flag waving and one to go. Working for the final time in turn number one. Toth was fast here a season ago. Led a good portion of the... Uh -oh. Second feature, meanwhile, though, a battle for third. Dylan Madsen gets to the inside of Jan Boussier. Madsen's going to make a bid for the final BA Custom Headers redraw spot. He's got it. Toth wins heat number one for the Crate 602 Sportsman. Talbot all by his lonesome gets second, third at the line. Boussier, one last shot. Madsen races his way back to the final redraw spot. Boussier and Quenville are qualified what a good race there for the final redraw spot. Yeah, Madsen started in third, but fell back to like sixth spot and, and picked it up there on the final lap. 14, Joe Toth, easily the winner of heat number one. 14, T. Payton Talbot second. And the 89, Dylan Madsen third. They go to the redraw. Other qualifiers, fourth spot, the 21, Jan Boussier, and fifth, the 13 of Jason Quenville. Lineup for heat two, pole position. Out of Boston Spa, New York, the CQC Painting, HD Concrete Construction, 49, Chris Jakubiak. Alongside of him at a mount up to New York, the Upstate Company's American Fireworks, 23 is David Dickey. Starting from third position, driving out of Chelsea, Quebec, in the Terra Pro Construction, number 22C, Cedric Gouvreau. Alongside of him at a Milford, Delaware, the Dietz and Watson, Danny's Pizza Pizzazz, Eric Corman owns 16S, Tom Moore Jr. Fifth position out of Cornwall, New York, and the Interstate Batteries, number 38, Kevin Stevens. Alongside of him, out of Saratoga Springs, New York, in the Stones Pharmacy, MNJ Construction, 27, is Michael Ballestero. Seventh spot out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts, in the Benson's Pet Center, CWG Excavating and Timbering, number six, John Santolin. And the final starting spot out of Waterville, New York, the Zielinski Paving High Voltage Hills, number 11, is Nick Zielinski. Eight more laps, five to qualify, three go to the redraw. This will be heat number two of four for the 602 Sportsman, part of the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches Sunshine Swing. Joe, this will be a treat for you because Chris's brother is in this heat race, so you get to see uh, how he acts up here when his brother's racing. It's terrible. Well, hopefully he's better in a heat race than he's been the last two nights. Well, I, I can't <laughs> wait to see how you, you get that uh, emotion like Darrell Waltrip used to when Michael was racing. Or Only what? if he's doing well. Uh -huh. <laughs> he did well last night in the feature. I was proud of him there. That's awesome. Here we go. Heat number two. Jakubiak brings him down to the green. Uh-uh. Joe yep. said no. Somebody went early. Yeah. I think it was Jakubiak. Good yeah. job, Joe. We have the Sunoco start zone over there in turns three and four. You see the two signs, one in the middle of the corner, the other just coming off the exit. The original start has to happen at the second t sign. Conveniently, you guys have yellow on the outside wall and yeah. yellow tires, so we just worked with you guys, put them there. But if you're at home watching, there's the first yellow sign. There's the second one. They're supposed to come to that second tire before they fire. This time they do, and away we go. Jakubiak and Dickey rubbing wheels coming to the green, but we are underway. Cedric Gavreau now a quick third down the back on lap number one. Here comes Michael Ballestero with a great jump. Ballestero from sixth going to the inside of Gavreau looking for the final BA Custom Headers redraw spot. He's got it. Gavreau trying to come back after him now. Yeah, Ballestero, a name I'm familiar with here at Alltech Raceway. He's had success here in the past, and nice to see him back this year and having a good run. Absolutely. Well, Tom Moore Jr. just got by Cedric Gavreau. He'll pick up position four. Gavreau, Gavreau back to fifth, and now some action behind them. Stevens battling for position. He just lost the spot now to Nick Zelensky. Meanwhile, up front, Dickey still has two, and Ballestero three. Yeah, the top three have separated themselves a little bit from fourth place running. Tom Moore Jr., Gouvreau, a little, other, little bit of a mistake. Nick Zelinski started last. He's up to six. Oh, Gouvreau is sideways right in the middle of three and four. Stevens piles into him, and the yellow lights are going to come on. Wow. That was like a slow motion. Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, it looked like he, he was there sliding. Was he going to spin? Wasn't he going to spin? And then Stevens was like, oh. 
He tried to not hit him, but he hit him anyway. So, and Chris, what are we seeing out of your brother's car? What's the uh, what's the call from the tower? We here? got a flow re- <laughs> replay for those watching yeah. at home. I'm really surprised. Gouvro is really fast up at home in Canada, and I think my guess would be it, the track. Right. So Jeff, we talked about he's been better in features when the yes, track slicks yes. up. My guess would be the race car for Gouvro is a little bit tight, and he threw it into the corner trying to get it to roll over and set threw it a little bit too hard, and it got around on him. That would be my guess. Yeah, Gavro has, I won't say struggled, but he has not been noticeable during qualifying. Right. But in the features, when it slicks up after the modifies, when the 602 sports will come out, Gavro is like a rocket. <laughs> yeah, he, he, we, he goes. We see that a lot here weekly. And, and Wendell's really good about giving the drivers different track conditions every mm-hmm. night. And and that's one of the things that he he kind of likes to do. It's right. kind of a little challenge for him, you know. <laughs> he'll come up and say, well, it's going to be a little different tonight. And, you know, so it's fun. It's Here. what makes this place great. Here they come. Ballestero now getting a challenge from Tom Moore Jr. on the restart. Moore wow. will go to the outside of Ballestero looking for that last redraw spot. Ballestero, though, good through the middle of the corner, able to slide up in front of him. We'll come to the halfway point this time by. Ballestero drives it really deep into turn number three. Here comes David Dickey. Dickey trying to make a bid at Chris Jakubiak for the lead here. Yeah, Jakubiak's got a good race car. He's able to keep it from pushing here. I notice a couple of the guys in the field. The Yeah, look at here. we got a battle. Tom Moore Jr. to the inside of Ballestero. Moore takes the spot. 22nd to 9th in last night's feature. Oh, oh, here goes oh. Ballestero back at him. <laughs> yeah, he made a boo-boo over there. Ballestero's coming at him. We know how good Ballestero is at this racetrack, so TMJ is going to have to work hard. Yeah. Meanwhile, Dickey again working within just a couple of car lengths of Jakubiak for the lead. Heading into the turn, Jakubiak still leading. Dickey still putting on the pressure. Two to go. More now in the hot seat. He's got the last redraw spot. And Ballestero put the pressure on him. And Nick Zielinski coming from pretty far back. He started last, and he's one spot. Make that he is in the last qualifying spot now with the 11. Jakubiak drove it into turns one the last lap there and almost lost the lead. Here comes Dickey to the inside. He's got a good car right here. The 23 lurking right there behind the 49 of Chris Jakubiak. Jakubiak's going to have to... uh, Protect the line here down the back straightaway. A little bump right there. Here we go off into turns number three and four. A couple of really good battles here on the Barons Performance Warehouse. White flag lap, Jakubiak and Dickey. Moore and Ballestero. Moore and Ballestero banging wheels here off the corner. Jakubiak's going to get the heat race win. TMJ holds on to the final redraw spot over Ballestero and Nick Zelinski. A good run for Zelinski. Eighth to fifth for Zelinski. Zelinski, well, no, no, no. I'm going to talk about Nick Zelinski. I watch okay. him every Friday night at Utica Roma Speedway. He's a limited sportsman regular. Last year was his first season racing. He comes down here, goes last to fifth, and puts himself into the transfer spot. I expect my brother to run well, Joe, so okay. I'm not. Did you give him the TMJ? Was that something that you I did? I did that, yeah. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your winning driver, the 49, Chris Jakubiak, 23. David Dickey gave it everything he had. He got second. 16 as Tom Moore Jr. holds on to third to make the redraw. 27, Michael Ballestero, a great challenge, ends up fourth. And the 11Z, as Chris mentioned, 11, Nicholas Zelinski from last to fifth to qualify. Here is your lineup for heat race number three. Pole position out of Johnstown, New York. Driving in the L.M. Mason co- contractor, Ingram Engines, number 21C, Brian Calabrese. Alongside of him out of Addison, New York, the Micro Solutions JB Specialties 5K is Kenny Peoples, Jr. Starting from the third position, driving in the FX Caprera Harley-Davidson, Big Dog Towing, number 5EJ, out of Gloversville is Tanner Warner. Alongside of him out of Madison, New York, Driving in the Brodell Fuel Group, Paramount Hauling. Number 26B is Matty Brodell. Fifth position, driving out of Daleville, Pennsylvania, the O'Hara Construction 44, James O'Hara. Alongside out of Quebec, Canada, driving in the number 28 is Eric Lazier. Starting from seventh position, driving in the number 61L, that's the Poison Remorse. Number 7, the 61L, that's Donovan Lucier. And the final starting spot out of Federalsburg, Maryland, the JW Brown Logging 86 is Trey Hicks. Heat three, again, eight laps, five qualify, three to the redraw. 
Kenny Peoples Jr. had a great top five run last night. He will take the early lead. Interested to watch Tanner Warner. Had one round of practice in that car on Tuesday night. He's been helping E.J. Gallup the last two nights. Tanner Warner right now holding on to that third and final redraw spot. KPJ, Kenny Peoples Jr., been impressive so far this week. Right now, he's your leader with Calabrese hot on his heels and a good battle back here. Donovan Lucier trying to grab a qualifying spot, Joe. Yeah, the guys are really shaking back there in that third and fourth position, watching these battles kind of move around the racetrack. We got one right now for the lead to 21 to the inside. He'll take the top spot. Maybe a battle back down the outside. Yeah, that's Kenny Peoples Jr. battling with Brian Calabrese into the turn. Calabrese will slide by, entering the corner, grab the lead from Peoples. Right behind them is Tanner Warner. Chris, how about Matty Brodell? Matty, another driver, I believe, was a limited yep. sportsman driver, yep. Utica Rome, coming down the Florida a track she's never seen. She qualified last night. She's looking great again tonight. She's qualified through the Concy tonight, trying to do so through the heat race right now. Really comfortably in the spot. She's got fourth as Donovan Lucier slides by James O'Hara for the fifth spot. So Lucier grabs the final transfer spot here at the halfway point. Now Lucier going to try and run down Brodell, your leader, Calabrese, setting sail. Yeah, guys, it looks like everybody's just settled into a position. Ooh, looks like one drips up there coming off a of two almost into the wall. But everybody's kind of settled in to a groove on the racetrack here. The track kind of in that transformation mode where we begin to go from kind of wet to starting to slick off. So things are changing out there pretty quickly. Yeah, it, it's really crazy to watch them because they say you can make three laps in a row that are the same in the fourth time. You try to the same thing did the last three laps and it doesn't work. So I've been watching times all night and they were able to stay really consistent with their lap times while the track track was wet and as the night goes on sometimes that'll change for some drivers unless they're really good in the slick yeah these are the moment where the best drivers and the most experienced drivers start to show off a little bit as the track changes they're able to stay on top of it with adjustments and in their race car with their lines brian calabrese taking the barons performance warehouse white flag one more trip around the speedway calabrese a winner here last season in the three and four for the final time in heat number three. Cal Brees comes out of turns number four. Smile underneath the helmet. Checker flag waves on heat race number three. Peoples will get two. Warner will get three. Brodell four and Lucier fifth. Followed by Lozier across the line. Then O'Hara and Hicks. So you're Qualifiers out of heat number three, the winning driver, the 21C, Brian Calabrese, runner-up, the 5K, Kenny Peoples Jr., third to the 5EJ of Tanner Warner. They go to the redraw. Fourth to 26B, Matty Brodell, and fifth the 61L of Donovan Lucier. One more heat race. That'll be heat four for the 602 Sportsman. Pole position. Driving out of Hermitage, Pennsylvania in the Novus Home Mortgage Wheatland Steel Processing 5C, Aiden Cipriano. Alongside of him out of Milford, Delaware, driving the Peninsula C, CNC Contracting 17T, Chris Thompson. Third starting spot, he is your Fast Line Performance Hot Lap Hero tonight. Out of Galloway, New Jersey, the Ace in the Hole Landscaping Velocita, number 73, Paulie Hartwig the third. Fourth starting spot, hailing or excuse me, driving in the Onyx Industries, number 42 out of Malta, New York. That is Daryl Nutting. Fifth position was last night's feature winner out of St. Catharines, Ontario. Driving in the Bobcat of Hamilton Advantage Trailer, number 72, James Friesen. Sixth starting spot out of Quebec. Driving in the number 85, that is David Langoy. And the final starting spot out of Laurel, Delaware. Driving in the Plum Creek Farm, carries towing number 43, Michael White. Joe, have you gotten a chance to go meet that Hartwig kid yet? Not yet. He is 13? Is he the one with the big hair? No. 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 Just the one with the big hair. That's Bubba McPhee, the 22 modified. He has got some big hair. (laughs) I don't know how he gets it in the helmet. I don't either. Hartwig, that kid is a trip. Last night, right down here in front of everybody, he's offering me 100 bucks to try and tell him where the number one is. (laughs) <laughs> I said, get away from me, kid. <laughs> I don't think he has $100. <laughs> he's very, he's not afraid to talk. He's uh, 
Very well-spoken young man. <laughs> All right, we're underway. Heat number four, Aiden Cipriano down the back straightaway battling with Christopher Thompson. Thompson, uh, it was neat talking to him after the races last night because he only started driving 602 Sportsman late in the year last year. He's been a 600cc micro sprint driver prior to that. Wow, doing a great job here tonight. Nice to have him down here. It's a it's a big commitment to make the trip to Florida or race from up there. And what, we can't say enough about the drivers who, who do that. Well, how about this right now? Paulie Hartwig has fallen from third to fifth, and James Friesen, last night's winner, from fifth to seventh. An interesting open, interesting opening couple of laps here. Hartwig, though, nutting, and Langoy got locked together over there in three and four. Hartwig says two for one special. Thank you very much. Cipriano, meanwhile, making a bid for the lead off of two. Yeah, side by side, down the back straightaway. Cipriano saw that bottom line open up. Thompson took it to the high side. He's going to drive it in deep here in turns number four. Looks like he'll take the lead back here at the flag stand. How about that? Christopher Thompson and Aiden Cipriano. Even though Chris Thompson is a rookie in the sportsman, he is not, you know, a teenager like Aiden Cipriano is, but they are having a great battle for the number one spot. Cipriano driving it in on the bottom. Thompson sets the car rolls up top paulie hartwig going to try and make this a three-car battle here in a moment we're halfway hartwig is coming nutting and langoy aren't too far behind either the top six are all within half a straightaway cipriano for the lead yeah hartwig saying keep racing guys here i come hartwig with a good car to 73 to the inside Ooh, we got a good side-by-side -side battle going on there yeah cipriano not giving up on Thompson battling for the lead, and Aiden Cipriano now has taken over the lead. Opening night, he started 19th and finished 6th. Last night, he started, he made the redraw and ended up 10th. So he's had two good runs, but one was a little more dramatic than the other. But tonight, he's in the uh, going to be in the redraw if he maintains the number one spot. But look at this. Here comes Nutting to the inside. He'll grab two for one. Two laps to go. Langoy just bounced it off the wall. I told you guys, Daryl Nutting was following Pauly Hartwig, yeah. and Nutting is rolling the bottom side really well right down there in the brown underneath Thompson and Hartwig. He's to second. Hartwig going to try and follow him through. We've also got a battle for the final qualifying spot between Friesen and Langoy. So one lap left to go. Car number five, Aiden Cipriano. Nutting right there in 42. I think he's kind of secure in that spot here we go barrett's one lap to go ladies and gentlemen down the back straight away the 5c aiden cipriano sails it off into turns number three and four checkered flag in the air driver gets a win here tonight in heat race number four daryl nutting second in car number 42 how about paulie hartwig in this in the 73 he'll bring it home third the 17t chris thompson fourth and David Ligouris in car number 85, fifth. So your qualifiers from heat number four, the 5C, Aiden Cipriano, your winner, 42 Daryl Nutting, is second. Oh. Then third spot to 73, Paulie Hartwig, the third. They go to the redraw, 17T, Christopher Thompson, fourth. And the 85 is the last qualifier that is David Langoy. Would you so, like to know really quick how weird All Tech Raceway is? Okay. Yes. James Friesen won last night. Yes. He's on his way to the Concy tonight. Yeah, yeah. That happens. So four heats for the sportsmen. Joe Toth, Chris Jakubiak, Brian Calabrese, and Aiden Cipriano are the four sportsmen heat winners. We had four heat sportsmen, four heats modified. We were going to roll into our modified consolation next. Then after that will be a commercial break and then our BA Custom Headers redraws. Hey, if you're here at the track, don't forget, concessions are open here underneath the announcer's tower and the Bob Hilbert Sportswear souvenir trailer or apparel trailer, I guess you could say, is open down back on the concourse. So check out all of the latest and greatest apparel. The hot off the presses, they... Got it right out of Bob Hilbert's shop and loaded it in a trailer before we left for Florida. So check out Mike and Joanne are down there waiting to see you pick up your latest gear for 2024. Thanks again to our series title sponsor, Bob Hilbert Sportswear, boasting more than a half century of providing the finest in screen printed and embroidered apparel. Based in Boyertown, PA, Bob Hilbert Sportswear is specializing in the racing industry along with schools, commercial, and corporate work. Their fundraising option is a great program organizations and companies to raise awareness and funds. Check Bob Hilbert Sports are out on the web 
at bobhilbert.com or do some shopping on the online store at Bob Hilbert Shop. BobHilbertShop.com. Thanks again to the official fuel, the Short Track Super Series Sonoka Race Fuels. They're on the web at SonokaRaceFuels.com. And American Racer Tire, the official tire of the Short Track Super Series, AmericanRacerOnline.com. American Racer, Sonoka Race Fuels, and our series title sponsor, Bob Hilbert Sportswear. Chris, our lineup. Scheduled for the pole. We'll see if he makes it out after the damage in the heat race. The 35, Francois Belmar. Out of Quebec and alongside of him, out of East Cannon, Connecticut, the 35, Chris Curtis. Row two inside out of Pipersville, PA, the six of Danny Buck. And alongside of him, out of Binghamton, New York, the 12 of Darren Smith. 70A Alex Payne will go from fifth, and the 38, Gene Matthew Raymond, starts sixth. 7Z Zach Payne and 27, Jason Riome will make up row four. The six of Matt Stangle, the 29 of Julian Raymond, Make up row five, and Daniel Morgevitz and Matt Caprera make up the final row. We are told the 35 of Francois Belmar, the 70A of Alex Payne, and the six of Matt Stengel are all in backup cars. They all go to the tail here for this consolation race. Six cars will qualify, eight laps at distance. We took, we got a yellow no start. We took five out of the four heats, that's 20. We'll take six out of the consolation giving us a 26-car starting field. All right, Joe, you got to see these guys in the heat races. These were the unfortunate ones that didn't get to qualify, so see if they made any adjustments. Yeah, I think that they were probably watching all the 602 heats <laughs> and probably making some uh, some minor adjustments. Nothing major. You can't make major adjustments. Especially not at this place. You can dial yourself out very, very quickly here at All Tech Raceway. Green flag is out. Jeff mentioned it. The top six will qualify for tonight's main event. Chris Curtis quickly on the rails out in front. Three-car battle for that second spot into the turn. Danny Buck has it. Here comes Darren Smith. He's got Zach Payne right behind. Then we got Raymond next in line, battling into the turn, and here comes Alex Payne. Yeah, Alex Payne with that backup car drives his way up to six. Danny Buck and Darren Smith are duking it out hard for the runner-up spot. Daniel Morgevitz and Alex Payne are duking it out for the final qualifying spot. All kinds of action once again here at the All-Tech Raceway. Man, great camera work by the guys down in the infield giving us awesome shots here. It is just excellent to see some of the racing going on here. we got them two, three wide around the speedway. Your leader, Chris Curtis, has kind of set that right rear right up on that small cushion here at All-Tech Raceway, and he's kind of getting a good grip up there. We'll have to see how 35 fares. Can he win? We'll see. Working out of the corner right now, Curtis has the lead. He's had two 10th place finishes so far this week. Darren Smith running in the number two spot. Danny Buck next in line. Then Zach Payne into the turn. Raymond in the 38. Battling into the corner. Down low on the outside is Alex Payne side by side. Payne and Raymond duking an outfit in sixth. The good news for them, they are way out in front of the car in seventh, which is now Matt Stangle. Daniel Morgevitz is back to eighth. We've got five complete and three laps to go. Remember when we said Chris Curtis's lead was large? Not anymore. Darren yeah. Smith, the guy we talked about, top five the last two nights. Darren Smith trying to run down Chris Curtis. He is running down Chris Curtis for the top spot. Yeah, you watched him there a couple of laps kind of mirror his line around the speedway. Now he has actually taken that line and went to the high side of the racetrack. The 35 working a different groove down here in turns number three and four. Here's Darren Smith out of the corner. He got right up behind Woo. Curtis, but Curtis had an awesome launch off of turn two and walked away from Darren. Darren closes back in, running the middle lane. Curtis switched to the bottom. The Bears Performance Warehouse white flag. One to go. Curtis has the lead. One to go. Remember, if you're at home watching, rooting on your favorite, you want them to have the yellow crown above their name on the score bug at the top of the screen. That means they are a qualified car. Chris Curtis is a qualified car. He is going to work out of turn number four. He's a consolation winner tonight here at All Tech Raceway. Curtis, Darren Smith, your top two. Danny Buck third. Zach Payne. Alex Payne and Gene Matthew Raymond are your top six. They are your six cars qualified for tonight's 40 lap, 8,000 to win. Short track super series modified main event. 35, Chris Curtis is the winner. 12, 
of Darren Smith second. Six of Danny Buck is third. The seven Z Zach Payne fourth. Seventy eight Alex Payne fifth, and the thirty eight of Jean Matthew Raymond coming home in position six. So twenty six cars set for tonight's. 40 lap. Yes, last night was 35. Tonight we go to a 40 lap main event for the Big Block Small Block Modifieds. $8,000 on the line to the winner. We have one qualifying race left to go. That'll be for the sportsman. But first, we have the BA Custom Headers redraw. If you're watching at home on Flow Racing, we'll send you to a short break and come back with the BA Custom Headers redraw. PDRSpeed.com offers a complete line of oval track speed equipment. Jeremy Slavic trying to make a bid for the two spot. Products like All Star Performance, Fignell Racing Products, Barron's Performance, Burt Transmissions, DMI, Falco, Penske, Motor State, JLR Technologies, TV12 Race Products, and more. Jeremy Slavic, your modified winner. Our online store makes parts ordering easy and convenient from anywhere at any time. PDRSpeed.com, speed at your fingertips. Ollie's deals are so good, you won't believe the prices. Can this pack be real? This has to be a joke. It's no, no joke. joke. This store is amazing. You have to see it for yourself. Ollie's Bargain Outlet sells famous brand name merchandise at up to 70% off the fancy store prices. Bargains on housewares, toys, bed and bath, books, food, gifts, and so much more. Hurry in to get the deals now, because when they're gone, they're gone. Ollie! Good stuff, cheap! Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. We are the number one Renegade Toter Home dealer and the number one Intech and Bravo Sprint Car Trailer dealer. No one sells more Toter Homes and Sprint Car Trailers than we do. Check out our complete lineup at CapitalRenegade.com. If you're in the market for a Toter Home or a trailer, trust the people that are in the pits with you and that support the sport. 
2016, Dig Race Products has had a sole focus on Northeast dirt modified shocks and suspension tuning. Located centrally in New York, Dig is the industry leader in at track shock and setup support. This hands on at the track approach is what guides the design and development in delivering the highest quality shock absorbers to the dirt oval track market. Take your program to the next level and feel the difference on Dig. All right, welcome back to All Tech Raceway for the VA Custom Headers redraw for our modified and sportsman drivers tonight. The top 12 drivers, the top three out of each of the four heats for both classes will be coming forward to pick a Bob Hilbert Sportswear hat. These very same hats that are here can be purchased at the online store at bobhilbertshop.com. Our first driver tonight to draw will be the winner of heat number one, Austin Hubbard. All right, Austin. Well, you've been in the redraw, I believe, all night so far this week. So uh, what do you think? Uh, car was uh, pretty good out there, and you had a battle with Stuart Friesen to get the win. Yeah, uh, the car was good. I was good early in that heat, just making speed. And then I seen Stuart, and his restarts kind of got in my head. So I started covering up and kind of killed my speed. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the track's totally different again, which is cool. And this place is fun because it's – a new challenge every night. I think tonight's probably might be one of the best races down here this year. So I think it's going to be pretty exciting for the fans. All right. See what you got. Pick a Bob Hilbert hat. All right. Pick, pull that cardboard out there and we'll see what you got. Number five for Austin Hubbard. Next up will be Eric Rudolph. Eric won heat race number two tonight. Eric's been in the redraw all three nights. He's always run well here at All Tech Raceway. A little slippery down here, Eric. All right, what do you think? You've been in the redraw every night, uh, had a good running car. You won your heat again. Yeah, yeah, we had a really good running car in the heat race tonight. It was a little narrow out there, but we were able to get ahead and kind of have fresh air on the nose. And then, uh, you know, just watch the laps click off and then uh, prepare yourself for the race. All right, see what we come up with here. Number four for Eric Rudolph. Mark Johnson with the winner of heat race number three. Mark Johnson, driver of the SNS Asphalt number nine. Grabbed the win in the third heat race tonight. Mark uh, was on his way to a good run last night until the, I guess, something broke in the suspension, but you came back with a vengeance tonight. Yeah, we had a mechanical issue last night and all kinds of other issues, and, uh, had my tire guy have some health issues, and thankfully we got him back here, and uh, he's going to hopefully pick me a good number. All right. Well, we'll see what we got here. Come on over here. Pick a hat. Bob Hilbert hat. Pull the cardboard out there, and we'll see what you got. Number eight for Mark Johnson. Thank you. Thank you. Next up will be Danny Heber. Danny won heat race number four tonight. Danny uh, follows the Short Track Super Series South region. Good to see him in Florida. What do you think? It looks like you guys got things dialed in tonight. Yeah, it's better than last night. We were we watched a feature in Texas Roadhouse last night, so uh, anything's better than tonight. So we're just uh, I'm wearing the dig shock guys out at the truck all week, and they're doing you know really got us going well here. So we'll see you know see what happens in the feature. All right, what do you got? Seven. Number seven for Danny Heber. Next up will be Stuart Friesen. Stuart Friesen was in heat race number one, battling with Austin Hubbard and made it close at the finish. So Stu's in the redraw again tonight. 
So uh, what do you think, Stu? Wendell keeps throwing different curveballs at you guys. Yeah, for sure. And I throw a different redryer out here tonight, too, to <laughs> see if we can mix up our luck a little bit. All right, yeah. Let's see what you got here. Last time you got the $50 bonus, what are you going to get this time? He's hot, number one. Uh-oh, number one. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Are you going to get him the 50 bu bucks from last night? Yeah, I'll buy him a couple beers later. I um, just want to say hi to Jess and Parker and Grandma Janice watching at home. Uh, miss you guys, love you, and um, thanks to all our supporters. The whole Hellmar team's been working hard all week. It's been a nice week, and hopefully we can, we can you know, finish a little stronger. All right, Stuart Friesen picks number one. Danny Creedon is up next. Danny Creedon has been in the redraw every night as well. So you've had a solid week. I guess you would probably like to have a little bit more in the feature, but this tricky racetrack is uh, is a tough one to tame. Yeah, we're going to just throw some stuff at it tonight, but then looking at the racetrack, it threw us curveball. It's got some grip on the top and the bottom. So uh, we're going to make a decision, but, you know, be on the front stretch three for three. I'm kind of happy with that. All right, see what you got here. You got to get the number out of there first. Number 10 for Danny Creedon. Next up will be Danny Varon. Danny Varon. And B, this doesn't look like Danny Varon. Pick a hat, young lady. Take the cardboard out of the inside there. Right there. There you go. Number 12. Number 12 for the 01 of Danny Varon. You can keep that. So he gets the BA Custom Headers $50 bonus for picking the worst number. Peter Britton, the next one to draw. So now you can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief because the worst one's gone. So uh, your night turned out pretty good because uh, you're in the redraw tonight. That's the best of the three so far. Yeah, that's uh, it's the happiest redraw I've ever made in my life, I think, you know, after the last couple of nights. But... Uh you know, hopefully we got things turned around a little bit. It's been a struggle, obviously, but, uh, you know, big thanks to Agway of Boston Spa, uh, Rich and Randy, of course, everything they do, uh, DTD TV. Them guys are pretty cool, and uh, we're starting out at nine. All right, good best of luck. Thank you. Ninth starting spot for Peter Britton. Bobby Hackle, the fourth, next up. Bobby was a third-place finisher last night. His second uh, time he made the podium in an STSS event. This one looks lonely over here. All right, we'll take that one. So what do you think? Uh, you had a good run last night, got the top three finish, and uh, now you're in the redraw tonight. So obviously you guys kept some good notes. Yeah, not bad. Uh, we were a little um, aggressive for the track conditions, but we're hoping it comes around to us, and we'll put our heads together and figure something out. Starting third tonight's not going to hurt, so that, that's good. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, keep our tear-offs clear and get some clean air and uh, see how it shakes out. And uh, we're really, I think, better the second half of these races, so hopefully we can stick around where we're starting until then, and we'll, we'll give, it a, give it a hell of a end. All right, best of luck. Yep, thank you. All right, Bobby Hackle will start third. Tyler Siri, next one to draw. The boss man is here. He joins us a lot when he can, especially on these faraway trips, but I guess he likes to go to Florida and Texas and Louisiana and and uh, thanks for coming down once again. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, thanks to Brat and All Tech Speedway for uh, putting this show on. It's great. It's a great pay. Um, you know, we love to try to come sometimes here and there, and uh, it's fun. You know, uh, everybody else gets here a little ahead of time, has practice and all that. You lose that advantage, but you guys come pretty well prepared because you come out of the trailer pretty quick and then do very well. Yeah, I really like this place, so it fits my style, you know what I mean? So that helps out, but... Um, yeah, it's, I wish I could get here Tuesday night, but, you know, the business is booming, and it's, uh, I shouldn't even be here right now, but i got to sneak away for a couple of days, you know. Good deal. Well, what do you got here? See what you got number? Pull that cardboard out of there. He will start in position. Two. two. Number two for Tyler Siri. Larry White the next up to draw. Larry White. Six is left, and 11 is left. Larry White is left to draw, and the guy after him is Matt Shepard. So, um, no pressure, Larry. Six and 11. <laughs> the guys that have been one and two in both features. So, there's two hats here yet. All right, Larry. So far, so good. It's been a good week for you, and uh, track's a little bit heavier, but, uh, you know, it's already changing after those heat races. Yeah, you know, he's uh, Wendell's definitely got a lot more moisture in it tonight. Uh, 
you know, it's nice so that way uh, we're, we're not uh, getting our cars dialed in too good. It keeps throwing some curveballs, and it keeps the racing good. So, uh, you know, we just got to figure out what we need to do to uh, run on the surface and uh, be there at the end. All right, what do we got here? What the, the girls got you 11. Yeah, I started 13th last night, so not too bad. All right, 11th for Larry White. So Matt Shepard, the next one to draw. He's two for two in the wind department. <laughs> he just said, good job, girls. So, you know, the first night, everybody drew, and they left one for the last person that picked. So they left you uh, six, so that's not all that bad, right? Oh, God, Paul would have had a heart attack. Um, yeah, six is all right. Uh, Mid-pack, uh, you know, I get a little nervous starting on the pole. Um, didn't really know where to be. Larry snuck up on me last night. So I don't know. We definitely got a different track tonight. Um, Probably be racing his hack again and uh, look forward to hopefully putting on a good show here. All right, go get him. Thank you. Matt Shepard will start sixth. That will complete the BA Custom Headers redraw for the Modifieds. We'll do one for the Sportsman next. Chris Moore will put out some hats. We've got the Alltech Raceway 50-50. We're going to get that drawn as well. So I'm going to go over here and get George to pull me a ticket. This will be for your 50-50. Those of you who bought tickets, get them out while Chris is putting out the hats right now. If you have this ticket number, go to the tower. This is for your Alltech 5050. The winning ticket number is 692676. 692676692676. That's for the 5050. Take it to the tower, please. All right, Sportsman Division drivers up for their redraw. First up will be the winner of heat number one, Joe Toth. Joe Toth. Is Chris Moore giving you a hard time over there? No? Oh, he's trying to explain the redraw and not doing a very good job of it? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Well, Joe, you know, you struggled a little bit. You said, you know, you guys usually do very well at going to new places, different places, and figuring things out pretty quick. But this tricky little racetrack has been a little bit of a thorn in your side, but looks like you figured something out tonight. Yeah, uh, the past two years we've been pretty good, and then uh, this weekend we've been really good in the heat races, and then come the feature time we really struggled. So we tried a couple of new things that we or new things that we wouldn't have tried normally. So uh, we'll see what happens, and hopefully it works in our benefit. All right, what do we got here? Number 11 for Joe Toth. He got two ones, number 11. Chris Jakubiak next up. He won heat race number two tonight. Chris turning his week around here. He had a really solid run, won his heat race, had a great battle up front. So uh, not a bad start to your night tonight, right? Not a bad start to the night. Yeah, last year uh, we came down here, we didn't even make the show. So uh, my goal this year was to try to make the show. Uh, last two nights we had to go through the concy, and uh, tonight we had it uh, dialed in a little better. What do you got? Well, <laughs> now, what number did you get? Oh, what number did I get? Sorry, I'm not used to being up here. Number five. Number five. So, uh, I'll tell you what. So, anything you did majorly different between last night and tonight? Um, nope. Uh, just went home and relaxed and uh, washed the car. Good deal. Go get him tonight. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, Chris Kubiak. He'll start fifth. Next up will be Brian Calabri. He won heat race number three. Brian has been in the hunt all week. So uh, it was crazy at the end of that feature last night. It was like uh, all of you guys were like a yo-yo. You gain two, lose three, gain one, lose two. And uh, tonight you put yourself solidly in the redraw. Yeah, you know, we're just you know, see what happens with the track. And uh, I think I'm just too aggressive on the starts with the dirty tires and uh, I think it really hurts me because I'm, I'm really good at it at home, but here it's killing me. So uh, we're just going to back it down on the restarts, and if we lose one, we'll better than losing six. So we'll see what happens. All right, what do we got here for a starting spot? Number nine for Brian Calabrese. Aiden Cipriano. He wins heat number four. Aiden out of western Pennsylvania had a 13-win season last year. Two top tens already this week for Aiden. So uh, and you're in the redraw tonight. What do you think? You guys at the car, you said you don't run very well as often when the track is heavy, but you did good tonight. 
Yeah, I uh, saw where Calabrese was running, and I thought I'd just try to replicate that as best as I could, and it ended up working out for us, especially coming out, too. We always had a monster run. So it uh, looks like you guys are getting this thing dialed in for the wet track as well as when it slicks up. Yeah, we uh, just made a little bit of adjustments, trying to really figure out the heat race and the uh, time trials. That's really what's been messing us up a lot here. But other than that, I think we should be good for tonight. All right, what do we got? Number eight for the 5C, Aiden Cipriano. Peyton Talbot, he's got a win and a second, the point leader in the Wagner Automotive Championship chase for the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches 24 Sunshine Swing. Ah, oh, here, I know, he doesn't like to draw, so he's bringing a, a helper along. So he did pretty good for you last night, didn't he? Yeah, no, we were we were good last night. Um, you know, the car was real good, and, you know, we'll just uh, see what happens tonight. You know, uh, I, what was it, the first lap or so of your heat race, you took off like a rocket because you were back on, I believe, fifth spot on that and the initial start. Yeah, I, we actually started from fourth there. Um, I think that actually really was what saved us. Um, you know, starting on the top here uh, is actually a little bit better than I thought it was. Uh, you know, obviously, like last night, we gave it up, gave the top up on the restart. But, uh, you know, it really helped us out there. Um, it still was a little slimy off of two. But, um, you know, once I got clear, I kind of rolled the bottom. And the bottom was real good. Um, you know, just see how it goes tonight. What do we got over here? Uh, P10. Number 10 for Peyton Talbot, position 10. David Dickey, the next one to draw. David made the redraw the first night, not last night, but he's back in the redraw again tonight. So uh, they've got a pretty solid program going. So uh, what do you think? You said you've been having fun. You still having fun? Yeah, we. Uh, I think we've had a fast car all week. Uh, last night we broke coming to the green in the heat race. We broke a uh, shaft to the rear end. So we had to sit last night out. But tonight we're... Uh, feel pretty good or we'll see if we can race it for 30 laps as well as we did in the, the heat race yep. all right we'll go pick a hat see what you got here drivers getting their starting spots for the shirley shootout tonight number four number four for david dickey next up kenny peoples jr kenny peoples jr he was a top five finisher last night Remember, extra money on the line tonight for the Shirley shootout in memory of Shirley Zacharias. So we got all kinds of hats here. So what do you think? You've been, you got the, you and the crew have got this car running really good here so far this week. Yeah, we were good in the heat, but we just got to work on just a little bit for this feature. It's a different track, you know, different night. So we'll see what happens, and uh, we'll we'll put it to her. All right, what do we got over here? Number two for Kenny Peoples Jr. Next up, Daryl Nutting. Daryl Nutting. Daryl made a late race charge, gained several positions to pick up a redraw spot. Uh, it almost like the, looked like the parting of the Red Sea. The door opened and you drove through it. Yeah, I'd rather be lucky than good, right? Yeah, whatever, whatever works, right? Yes. Absolutely. So what do you think? The car was working really good tonight. Uh, yeah, I kind of left it alone from yesterday and just got to get up on it and drive it. So. And it worked out? It's so far so good. All right, what do we got here? Number seven for Daryl Nutting. Dylan Madsen, next up to draw. Dylan in the 89. We have one, two, three, four left. So what do you think, Dylan? Uh, you had a battle pretty hard there. You gained a couple, lost a couple, and then you made yourself into the redraw. Yeah, uh... Here, you really just want to get in the redraw. If you can do that, then you never really know what's going to happen. Yeah, and uh, you've had a pretty solid week so far. Yeah, uh, a couple top tens. Um, hopefully, we can get a little better tonight. With better uh, starting spot. We should be good. What do you got here? Three. three. Number three for Dylan Madsen. Tom Moore Jr. next to draw. Tom Moore Jr. next up to draw here. One six twelve, no pressure. They're all evenly spaced out there, Tom. One six and twelve. The best one, the worst one, and the one in the middle. Oh, I'm gonna pull the twelve. That's how this always works. Can't think negatively. Jeff, you, you know my last name and you know who my brother is. It's yeah, I know. It is. You know we had Joe Kelly, the announcer here at Alltech, joining us, and I warned Joe before your heat went out because how Chris may act if you were if you were up there racing. So uh, Joe was having fun watching. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah, I I've seen videos and stuff of how he acts in there, so that's pretty <laughs> cool. But I just want to thank Eric Corman for giving me the chance to drive his car, come down here, um, Deets and Watson, Ted's Body Shop, Danny's Pizza Pizzazz, everybody that 
got us down here for this week. We've been having a lot of fun. Say hi to my wife, Jess, and my boys, Charlie and Cody, at home, and the Corman family, Jenna and Hannah, and hopefully we uh, pull one of the good ones. All right. You got two good ones, one not so good. The not so good one will get you a $25 bonus from BA Custom Headers. What do we got here? We have number... Number one. Oh, ho, ho. I told you don't think negatively. Tom Moore Jr. gets the pole. Tanner Warner next up to draw. <laughs> Tanner Warner. Well, Tanner, you've been working hard all week from what everybody tells me. Now you get to drive. Yeah, I just want to give a big shout out to EJ for letting me drive the car. He's got some at home duties to go to. Uh, I appreciate it. I want to give a sh happy birthday shout out to Allison and uh, Nico from Pisico. All right, what do we got here? You got two choices left. And the number is 12. Tanner Warner gets the BA Custom Headers, 25 bucks. And Paulie Hartwig the third is the last one to draw. Well, just like the Modifieds, Paulie, they left you right in the middle. They left you number six, just like they left Matt Shepard. So you're not too bad off tonight. I mean, it was what it is. You know, we started off third, um, fell back to fifth. And then, uh, I don't know, the axle made a diff really difference. Um, we were really loose, airtight, and then uh, the car made a lot of difference. The track's really different from all those nights. So, uh, so I'd rather have six and 12, but um, uh, hopefully we uh, go to the front. Go get them. Thank you. All right, Paulie Hartwig will get six, and that will complete the BA Custom Headers redraw. Right after this will be the consolation for the 602 Sportsman, but before that, if you're home on Flow Racing, a short commercial break. Welcome back to All Tech Raceway. Night number three of the Sunshine Swing presented by Capital Trailers, or excuse me, Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches here in Lake City, Florida. One consolation to go before we get into feature time tonight. The STSS Creek 602 Sportsman Conti rolling out now. Hey, I just wanted to say a quick shout out here. 
Earlier in the week, we had Jason Ingalls here racing from the Cajun Series. Tonight, we got a couple of celebrities in the grandstand area. David Corbello, the starter for the series, is here tonight. And Daryl Folks is here, or Brother, Brother Folks, Folks, as he's known to yeah. the racing community. So shout out to those guys. Thanks for coming out tonight. Happy birthday to Mark Minitolo watching at home. Happy birthday to him. We get set to go. Consolation for the Creek 602 Sportsman Pole Position. Out of South Plainfield, New Jersey, the 29, Matt Ellery, and alongside of him out of Cornwall, New York, is the 38 of Kevin Stevens. Row two inside out of Quebec, the 28, Eric Lausier, and alongside of him out of St. Catharines, Ontario, last night's winner, the 72, James Friesen. Fifth starting spot out of Southampton, New Jersey, the 30 of Rob Teat, and going from sixth out of Chelsea, Quebec, the 22C of Cedric Gouvreau. Seventh starting spot out of Covington, PA, the 44, James O'Hara, and going from eighth out of Laurel, Delaware, the 43 of Mike White. Ninth starting spot out of Milford, Delaware, the 142, Justin Zook. Going from 10th out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts, the 6 of John Santolin. And the final starting spot out of Federalsburg, Maryland, the 86 of Trey Hicks. Rob Teat scheduled for the fifth starting spot. Now he will tag the tail. And we go green. Same as it's been the past couple of nights. Same as it was for the Modifieds, the top six will transfer into tonight's feature event. Kevin Stevens off the outside of the front row to the lead, and James Friesen quickly into the runner-up spot. Here comes your leader, Stevens, setting the pace, followed by Friesen, then Ellery down the straightaway. Behind him is Lazier in the 30, in the 28. Down the back straightaway, Michael White now making a bid. He'll move to fifth spot. Down the back, Cedric Gavreau right behind him. Out in front, Stevens leading. Here's that battle between Gouvreau and White and Matt Ellery, who started on the pole. Ellery has faded back to fourth, now going to be fifth. Mike White working to his inside. White and Ellery will go side by side. The 29 a little bit loose over there in one and two. Gouvreau shoves up the racetrack, though, and Ellery able to scoot away. Gouvreau hanging on to that final transfer spot. Off the corner, Stevens looked like he was getting a little pressure from Friesen, but Friesen now... Losing a little ground, Stevens still maintains the lead. Friesen now getting closer again. Out of turn number two. Yep, side by side for the lead. James Friesen trying to find whatever he had last night. Friesen slides up in front of Kevin Stevens for the lead. Stevens trying to come back after him. Friesen will hold him off. We are halfway through our consolation event. It is James Friesen, now your leader, then Stevens, Luzier, Mike White, Matt Ellery, and Cedric Gouvreau comfortably your top six. Yeah, just after you said Friesen nope. got by Stevens, Stevens retakes the lead, but it won't count because we got a spinner in turn four, the 30 of Rob Teat. So Stevens retook the lead, but it'll be all for naught. He did not get back around to score that lap. So Friesen will go back to the top spot. Well, we had a couple of birthday wishes there. You just had one, Chris. We have another birthday wish. One of the uh, persons associated with the Michael Ballestero race team. Happy birthday to Lee McConji. Lee McConji, happy birthday to you from all of us and from everyone with the Michael Ballestero racing team. This is our final qualifying event of the night. Four heats in a county for both classes. Next up will be the 40 lap, 8,000 to win. Big block, small block, modified feature race, followed by the 30 lap Shirley shootout for the sportsman, paying $2,500 to the winner. So James Friesen is your leader. He chooses the bottom. Interesting to see now, as we mentioned, prior to the yellow, the top six had really separated themselves from seventh and eighth. Well, now, James O'Hara and Justin Zook back there in row number four, an opportunity right back at the tail of a qualifying spot. Here they come, Friesen and Stevens. Down the straightaway, Lausier is next in line. Here comes Ellery. Ellery getting to the inside of Michael White. Michael White having a yeah. problem. He's getting railroaded down the back straightaway. He may soon drop out of a qualifying spot. Here comes Santolin into the corner as well. And Mike White off a of turn number two did not get going. 
Stevens and Friesen continuing the battle for the lead. Ellery's to third, Luzier is fourth, Justin Zook has fifth, and Cedric Gouvreau has the sixth and final transfer spot, but John Santolin and Mike White are right there. Yeah, White had a spot, but he dropped out of one. Now Gouvreau's on the outside, around the outside of the 142, Justin Zook. Here comes Santolin to the inside. Michael White will go under one, try to go around the other one, no dice. In crate six, oh, Zook, everybody racing for room. Rob Tito, man. Man, they were racing really hard there for that sixth and final transfer spot. Zook got sideways. O'Hara looped it, trying to miss him. And Teet just, it looked like, kind of skimmed off of the left side of Zook and shot up into the wall. Yeah, that wall is not very forgiving to a frame of a race car. The 30 is still rolling, but he's not on the racetrack now. He's got it to the infield, and he's going to stop there. We'll see about Zook and O'Hara. Tough break for him. Jeff, I was just going to say, 43 of Mike White just, again, goes to show how tough that this place is. Mike White up at home was a short track Super Series winner this past year at the Delaware International Speedway. Got his first career short track Super Series win at Delaware, and he's come down here, struggled mightily at the All-Tech Raceway, and that's what this place can do to you. That is for sure. Yeah. So Zook, looks like Zook, his night is going to end. He's got problems, I would presume, from the contact from Teat, but the McKinney's gang will get him on the hook. Hey, don't forget, you can follow the Short Track Super Series in now our 11th anniversary season on the website at shorttracksuperseries.com, Facebook Short Track Super Series, now on the new Twitter, which is X at Short Track underscore SS. Instagram at Short Track SS, YouTube Short Track Super Series, or Snapchat at Short underscore Track SS. Keep up with the Short Track Super Series. Bob Hilbert Sportswear Short Track Super Series fueled by Sunoco as we travel now into the second decade of racing. And don't forget, every 2024 Bob Hilbert Sportswear Short Track Super Series fueled by Sunoco event will be broadcast live on Flow Racing in addition to every event from Georgetown Speedway, Utica Rome Speedway, and Fonda Speedway. Dirt Track Digest TV remains on board to handle the production of every event, the same great quality you're accustomed to. Visit flowracing.com to sign up today. One annual payment of $150 gives you access to the Short Track Super Series, Utica Rome, Fonda, Georgetown, and a host of other series and facilities, including the All-Star Circuit of Champions, USEC, Stafford, Lincoln, Port Royal, the Wheel of Modified Tour, and much more. Flow Racing, stay, come for the race and stay for the rush. Back to green, into the corner, Gavro, look out, Gavro got sideways, oh, man. he gets clipped by Santolin, that'll send him around, and we'll go right back to yellow. That's unusual for Cedric. This has been an unbelievable He's, night for him. Remember, he got sideways, almost yeah. looped it. So I say he usually goes good yeah. when it's slippery, but... Uh, He's, they're having a... I almost, you know, you wonder, right, race car drivers, of course he's not going to be happy finishing fifth, sixth, seventh, you know... Maybe trying to make adjustments to the race car, and sometimes you go the wrong way when you do that, you yep. know. And yep. uh, I, I, again, just up here in the tower guessing, because he's got a fast race car. He's fast up at home in Canada. He came to Fonda with us once this year. He was fast again. That I think he got into the back of Lazier, excuse me, Lazier there, and that's what got him got him loose over there. That's what it looked like on the Flow Racing replay. So we had two cautions on the same lap in a sportsman event. That will necessitate a single-file restart. So we have two laps to go, green, white, then checker. That'll be our final qualifying event. Hey, don't forget upcoming events for the Short Track Super Series as we gear into the month of March. After we complete the Sunshine Swing, we got about a month off, and then the Northeast Modified Season kicks into gear. Saturday, March 9th at the Georgetown Delaware Speedway with a Jake Marie Memorial. 40 laps, 8,500 to win, 1,000 for 10th, 500 to take the green flag. It'll be the Quality Drywall South Region race number one for the Modifieds. Belmont's Garage South Region race number one for the 602 Sportsman. Paying 1,800 to win, 1,850 to win, 
That'll be Saturday, March 9th at the Georgetown Speedway. Here we go. Two more laps. Who's going to be the lucky six? We'll find out. Motoring into the turn. Sportsman Consi takes the restart green down the back straightaway. Friesen still chasing after Kevin Stevens. All this chaos has allowed Mike White to slide back into the final transfer spot as we come to the Barons Performance Warehouse white flag. Kevin Stevens holding off last night's winner, James Friesen, Lausier, or excuse me, Ellery, then Lausier, then Santolin and Mike White under fire from Gouvreau down in turns one and two. Yeah, battle now. Gavro battling on the comeback trail with Michael White. Here comes Friesen, one last attempt for the win. It'll be Kevin Stevens taking the checker over Friesen, Ellery, Lausier, Santolin, and Gavro. I cannot believe how bad Mike White is. I know. He is. Consolation winner, the 38, Kevin Stevens, 72. James Friesen gets second, 29, Matt Ellery third, 28, L, comes home in fourth spot. (laughs) Jackie posted, said, next time, could you do it for us? I said, tomorrow, I'm on it. (laughs) Coming home in fourth spot, the 28, L, Eric Lausier. Coming home in fifth, the sixth, John Santolin, and sixth, the 22, J, (laughs) of Cedric Gouvreau. So that'll complete qualifying. Four heats, two contests for the mods, four heats, two contests for the sportsmen. The 40-lap modified main event will be up next, followed by the 30-lap Shirley shootout for the sportsmen. But before we go there, we'll have a timeout for some commercials on Flow Racing. Do we have a lineup? No, I I looked at it. It's still muted. So you can... thought so. Uh, I've gotten 100 checks. It came through. So. Shit. Mm-hmm. 
PDRSpeed.com offers a complete line of oval track speed equipment. Jeremy Slazic trying to make a bid for the two spot. Products like All Star Performance, Bicknell Racing Products, Barron's Performance, Burt Transmission, BMI, Falco, Penske, Motor State, JLR Technologies, TV12 Race Products, and more. Jeremy Slazic, your modified winner. Our online store makes parts ordering easy and convenient from anywhere at any time. PDRSpeed.com. Speed at your fingertips. Ollie's deals are so good, you won't believe the prices. Can this pack be real? This has to be a joke. It's no, no joke. No, no. This store is amazing. You have to see it for yourself. Ollie's Bargain Outlet sells famous brand name merchandise at up to 70% off the fancy store prices. Bargains on housewares, toys, bed and bath, books, food, gifts, and so much more. Hurry in to get the deals now, because when they're gone, they're gone. Ollie! Good stuff, cheap! Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. We are the number one Renegade Toter Home dealer and the number one Intech and Bravo Sprint Car Trailer dealer. No one sells more Toter Homes and Sprint Car Trailers than we do. Check out our complete lineup at CapitalRenegade.com. If you're in the market for a Toter Home or a trailer, trust the people that are in the pits with you and that support the sport. Since 2016, Dig Race Products has had a sole focus on Northeast dirt modified shocks and suspension tuning. Located centrally in New York, Dig is the industry leader in at track shock and setup support. This hands on at the track approach is what guides the design and development in delivering the highest quality shock absorbers to the dirt oval track market. Take your program to the next level and feel the difference on Dig. Welcome back to All Tech Raceway for the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches. 2024 Sunshine Swing for the Bob Hilbert Sportswear Short Track Super Series Fueled by Sunoco. Up next will be the 40 lap Big Block Small Block Modified Main Event. And this is the way the drivers will roll to the starting grid. Pole pos uh, actually going from the back to the front. Starting from 26th position. Driving. In the Raymond Construction, number 29, make that the 38, the 38, Jean-Matthew Raymond. And inside of him in 25th position in the Nardozzi Paving and Construction, number 78 out of Canandaigua will be Alex Payne. Starting 24th out of Stanley, New York, in the NP Delivery, number 7Z, Zach Payne. And alongside of him, out of Pipersville, Pennsylvania, in the Craig and Leslie Ponder CNS Equipment, BDR Speed, number 6, will be Danny Buck. 22nd starting position out of Binghamton, New York, the Jeremy Smith Racing Integra Shocks number 12 will be Darren Smith inside of him out of East Canaan, Connecticut, driving in the Dry Zone Racing Development, Lindell Fuels number 35, Chris Curtis. 10th row outside out of Quakertown, Pennsylvania, the Blinderman and Sun Recycling number 20 will be Rick Laubach, and inside of him out of Vestal, New York, driving in the Sign Works Fleet Graphics, number three junior is Seth Zacharias. Ninth throw outside, driving out of Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, the Design Concepts Abstract Environmental, number zero one, TVD, Tanner Van Doren, alongside of him out of Roscoe, New York. Driving in the Quality Forestry Management, number 28, will be Michael Troutschold. Row eight, 16th position in the Blue Ox Energy. Smith Productions, Upstate Tool number 34 will be Rusty Smith inside of him from St. Catharines, Ontario. Driving in the SW Service Center, number six will be Money Matt Matt Williamson. Seventh throw outside, driving out of Phelps, New York, in the Shackleton Auto and Truck Sunrise Installation, Lane Yamaha 27J, the Dr. Danny Johnson. Inside of him, out of Rutland, Vermont, driving in the Mike Hans Trucking, Dennis Andrus. Plumbing, number 22J, Bubba McPhee. Row 6, 12th position. Driving in the Charles Tippett's Masonry, St. Lawrence Radiology, BDR Speed, number 01, Danny Varon out of Fonda, New York. Alongside of him out of Fulton, New York. The FX Cabrera Honda, Tracy Road Equipment, number 99L, Lightning Larry White. Row 5, driving out of Wurtsboro, New York. In the Stavarsky Paving, Shackle and Auto and Truck Parts, Accurate Collision, upon Palm Beach, Florida, number 16X, Danny Creedon. Alongside of him, out of Wheatsport, New York, in the Pepsi. Effects and excavation number 21A, Batman Peter Britton. 
Row four outside out of Gildalyn, New York. Driving in the SNS Asphalt Paving Family Electric Boss Mechanical number nine. It's the White Knight, Mark Johnson. Row seven on the inside. Driving out of Langhorne, Pennsylvania, the Kelly's on bridge. Scrappy's Auto Service, number 11 out of Langhorne, Katie Heber. Row six to the outside. Out of Savannah, New York, to Herlock Automobile Speed, Givens Produce 9S. It's Super Mad Shepherd. Inside of him, out of Federalsburg, Maryland. Driving in the Blades HVAC Services, number 65, Austin Hubbard. Outside of row two. Driving out of Ransomville, New York. In the National Maintenance Contracting Corporation, Highmark Blue Shield, 25, Eric Rudolph, alongside of him. Driving the Killer Crate Racing Products, number 97, from East Greenbush, New York, Bobby Hackle. Front row outside out of Horseheads, New York, the Atlas Speedway 5-star Tyler Siri. And from the pole position, the Hallmar number 44, Stuart Friesen. Let's give a nice wave when they come by. Something white, something bright. Wave it for your favorite tonight. The stars and the cars of the Bob Hilbert Sportswear Short Track Super Series fueled by Sunoco. We're ready to go. The Murray Automotive Group pace truck pulls it to the infield. Joe Chris has the double green flags in hand. We're ready to go. Night three of the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches Sunshine Swing. Watch them now. The Mighty Modifieds are ready for post time. The Mighty Modifieds are ready to rumble. Night number three of the 2024 Capital Custom Coaches and Trailers. Sunshine Swing takes oh, no. the green. We got a spinner. Oh, oh. We got them piling in hard. It looked like Creedon was the first car around. McPhee's in there. Mike Trouchold, Matt Williamson. Rick Laubach. Yep. Chris, Chris Curtis. Curtis. I think that Laubach, Smith, and Payne are all guys that – Jumped on the binders to not get into anything. Seth One. Zacharias. Chris Curtis is driving away. Zacharias. Those are three all that I mentioned. Laubach, yeah. Smith, and Payne. Payne. These other four I don't think are going to be as fortunate. <coughs> all these cars look like they've got pretty significant damage. And I think we're going to have to go red here. Yeah, Creighton is over there. He's the first one that went around, I think. We'll wait till we get a flow replay. And then a couple of cars met him nose to nose. And then the rest of the line on the top stopped. Here's a then, replay, Jeff. But then some more. They were yep. three wide in front of him. Those yeah, Trout Scholl piled in. And yeah. Williamson, Danny Buck slid Just by in the infield. Around. The Creighton started on the bottom and ended up on the outside in that flow racing replay, but Troutschold and McPhee got in pretty hard there, and Williamson got clobbered pretty good on the bottom. All right, so they clean up the uh, accident over here in turn number two. We are going to have to have a complete restart, and the officials will determine... The new restarting procedure. This is our first mishap of the season. We're going to step aside for some commercial action on Flow Racing.
We're back at All Tech Raceway, Lake City, Florida, for night three of the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches Sunshine Swing. We had about an eight-car mishap in turn two right after the start of tonight's 40-lap modified feature. We'll get a flow racing replay for those watching at home. Out of all the cars that were involved in the accident, we are looking like we're only going to lose three. 23 cars are out on the track now lining up for the restart. It looks like Matt Williamson, Michael Troutschold, and Bubba McPhee will be the only cars that will be lost. They have towed some of those cars to the infield. They will then remove them to the pit area. But everyone else, even some of the cars that were stopped over there, Rick Laubach, Darren Smith, Danny Creeden, and some of those cars are all able to rejoin. So we got 23 of the original 26 starters on the track now for a complete restart. Officials have reset the lineup. So we'll still have Stuart Friesen and Tyler Seary in row one to bring the field down to green. So uh, a chain reaction yeah. mishap there. Do you have a little question here, I guess, yeah. over positions? Uh, Jeff, I, I don't know. We'll see. I would be surprised if we see Matt Williamson tomorrow. Uh, going on the full pickup, so it looks like damage to both the front and rear end of the race car. And uh, obviously he'll be racing next week. He's come down with the spec small block, giving it a shot, seeing how it worked out for him. Felt like this racetrack could get slick enough. Because so he was here in year one. Him. Yes, and ran well with the Jeff Barrett number three car. Um, but, yeah, with the damage to that race car, we'll see. Tomorrow's the big one, 50 laps, 10,000 to win. Tomorrow's the one he probably felt like he had the best chance in. The more laps, the slicker the racetrack yep. theoretically gets, and the better it will work out for him. We'll see. Would I guess I should say I wouldn't be surprised to see him, but I also wouldn't be surprised to not see him. So we started at 30 on Wednesday, 35 last night. Tonight, a 40-lap main event. The Shirley shootout, remembering Shirley Zacharias, will be coming up for the sportsman after this feature. Thanks again to Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches, offering toter homes and coaches, race trailers for all types of motorhomes, pit mules, accessories, and vending trailers from the following respected brands, Renegade Intech, Show Hauler, Bravo, Gen Y, C-Tech Manufacturing, and Alumni Tech Products. Visit the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches virtual showroom on the web at CapitalRenegade.com. CapitalRenegade.com. Give them a call at 301-595-2717. Okay, so, getting the lineup finished up here they're gonna hustle around trying to get Danny Johnson where he belongs in the lineup and then we will go back to green no laps completed it will be a complete restart of course minus the cars involved in the yellow and as you mentioned Jeff Despite the several cars we saw over there either come to a stop uh, and even be involved with some contact there, only three not returning. All right, we'll try it again. Take two, as they say in showbiz. Ladies and gentlemen, the mighty modifieds. Oh, here we go. We're going to have no a take start. Three. Oh, no. Go, 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 go. Man, those are scary. Yep. Tyler Siri with the itchy trigger finger jumping Stuart Friesen. But they got it all under control. We'd hope that they don't hold back too hard there. All right, we'll try it again. They got them all lined up, so we'll, we'll bring them around. 40 lap, sunshine swing, Friday night. The Mighty Modifieds are ready to rumble. Charging into the turn, night number three. At the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches, Sunshine Swing takes the green. 
down the back straight away. We got Friesen leading the way. We got Hackle now in second. Series in third. Shepard battling it out with Austin Hubbard. Shepard trying to work that outside groove down there in three and four. Tyler Series slides up. Here goes Austin Hubbard looking to march forward. Hubbard going to the inside of Tyler Siri for the third spot. Rudolph right there as well. And Hubbard will motor off at turn number two with the third spot. Yeah, Hubbard getting by Siri. Shepard's right there. Then Rudolph's Siri's running the outside lane out of the corner. Siri and Hubbard, then Shepard. Then we got Rudolph, Mark Johnson, Larry White, then Danny Heber next in line, followed by Rusty Smith. Hackles taking the lead, but we're going to go yellow left rear flat on the three of Seth Zacharias here on the home straightaway. Bobby Hackles guys are probably pretty PO'd at the yellow, but Zacharias was involved over there. You can see some of the bent-up sheet metal on the three junior machine. He was a part of what happened over there for turn number two. He will head to the pit area with the left rear flat tire. You know, uh, we've had I don't even think we saw the tow truck, but once the first three nights, the practice night, Wednesday or Thursday, so tonight the boys are a little bit more yeah. feisty. Somebody put the hex on us earlier. I forget who it was. Yeah, we won't mention any names, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wendell's bringing in the heavy, the, uh, heavy artillery there. I think that was what they took Williamson back with. No, they had the McKinney's the tow truck. McKinney's towing oh, okay, of Dover. Yeah, they, had it, they had it on the tractor at first. Yeah, McKinney's towing of Dover helps uh, is helping out the motorsports recovery crew this week. Thanks to them for coming down. McKinney's towing of Dover, assisting with the motorsports recovery crew that helps us every year here at All Tech and also works with us on Short Track Super Series Southern events. Three junior of Zacharias is on his way. There he is right there back out onto the racetrack. He will pop it into high gear, hustle it around because we are coming to the green this time by. Freezing. Freeze, yep. Freezing on the bottom, hackle on the outside. Then we got Hubbard and Siri. Here we go. Two complete. Motoring into the turn. Freezing's got the lead, followed by Hackle. Hubbard now third. Then Shepard getting by Mark Johnson and Siri down the back straightaway. He'll pull into fourth. Mark Johnson from eighth to fifth here in the early going. Here goes Shepard to the outside. Shepard trying to work around Hubbard for third. Three wide. Bobby Hackle going to lose two spots. And Shepard quickly moves into the runner-up spot. Hackle now got to go back to work on Hubbard. Hubbard coming after Shepard now. Yeah, look at that. Hubbard just drove off the bottom with like a rocket. Went by Hackle. Goes by Shepard. Shepard. Oh, we got a problem over here. That's the doctor. Doctor Danny Johnson. Danny sitting there the wrong direction. See if he goes pit side or if he gets himself turned around here. He is going pit side. Remember, drivers do get courtesy laps if they have tire issues. So we'll see what happens here with Danny Johnson in the 27J. Well... Didn't take long, but here they are. Three laps in. Friesen and Shepard occupying the front row. <coughs> we are three laps in, 37 laps still remaining. Hubbard has been a factor all yes. night long, and uh, to see him drive by Matt Shepard like that down the backstretch was... Uh, Impressive. Of course, he didn't get to keep the spot going back to the last lap scored, so he'll have to go back to third. Shepard holds second. Shepard making a big move out of turn four to go around two cars, coming to the line the last time, getting by Hackle and by uh, Hubbard to pick up second spot. So we'll take one more lap here for the courtesy lap. You mentioned drivers not getting a spot because of a yellow. Well, that happened to Bobby Hackle, right? He had the lead away before... Seth Zacharias' left rear flat tire cost him that lap. And then he now has fallen to fourth. So Hackle's still with some work to do from fourth. Mark Johnson's fifth, series sixth, Rudolph seventh. Larry White is eighth, Danny Varen ninth. And Tanner Van Doren rounds out the top ten. Again, the drivers are chasing the week-long Sunshine Swing Championship sponsored 
by Wagner Automotive of Marquesan, Wisconsin. Wagner Automotive, the home of the LS427 Modified Weekend Warrior Motor. $1,500 to the Modified Week-Long Champion and 1000 for the Sportsman. They're on the web at WagnerAutomotive.com. Here we go. Friesen and Shepard down the straightaway into the turn. Matt Shepard on the outside lane will grab the lead away from Stuart Friesen. Surprised to see Friesen choose the bottom, the top on these restarts has appeared to be anyway the place to be on the restarts, but Shepard will take advantage of it. He's to the lead, Friesen, and then Hackle gets to third. Hubbard and Tyler Seary, your top five. Larry White up to sixth. We got one scraping off the wall. That's Tanner Van Doren. We keep going down the back straight away now. Friesen, who had been on the bottom, switched to the top briefly now in the middle. Shepard leading the lead race, running the outside lane. Larry White getting by Tyler Seary and Mark Johnson and Larry White now up to fifth. Here comes Hackle outside of Friesen. I wonder if the race car is not what he wants it to be or Friesen's just biding his time right now. There it is. Now the 44 makes the switch to the top, and this is exactly what we saw early on last night. The top groove was the dominant groove and where he wanted to be, especially down in three and four. Friesen back to the bottom, down in one and two. Hackle will pound the top. Hubbard hooks the bottom off a of two. Down the back straight away. Friesen, Hackle, Hubbard. Here comes White and Siri. Johnson battling with Eric Rudolph, followed by Tanner Van Doren. But two, three, four, five, and six are all together entering turn number one. Here comes Hackle again. Oh, oh! Heber and Buck get together here on the front straightaway. That could have been much worse. Buck keeps going. Heber spins out. Heber's got a lot of sheet metal damage. I'd imagine at the very least he's going to have to go get get that fixed. Otherwise, he's going to have a pretty serious tire up. Tough to say. Danny Buck also drove away, but i got to imagine the left side on that car is pretty well tore up. Danny Buck was making hay on the top side. Got a run alongside of Heber off a of four. Heber didn't know he was there. Two of them came together and ran out of racing room. Buck had all four wheels off the ground. He was able to continue and keep his spot. Heber spun out, and Heber now drives away. And he will go to the pit area. That could have been much, much worse. Here's a flow racing replay. There oh. you go. Yeah. Oh, our speed cam went out for a minute. That happened quick. <laughs> wow. Danny's yeah. car was completely off the ground. And I think that's why Heber's car had so much damage because Danny landed back on the side of, yeah. of Danny's car. Really unbelievable. The six is able to keep going. Bumper. Yeah, I think he might have some after effects. We'll see, we'll see if that car survives for 40 laps. Eleven of Danny Heber, we are told, is done for the night. We've got lights are out. We're going to try and get the lineup squared away here in the mid pack. There we go. A complete. We got Shepard on the top. Friesen on the bottom. Leaders pick the top lane. Hackle and Hubbard row two. White and Siri row three. Here they come. Back to green. Hubbard on the outside of Hackle. Larry White fighting on the bottom lane. Battling hard for those top five spots down the back. Siri will try the outside on White. No dice. Yeah, White shuts the door on him going into turn number three. Now Larry trying to roll the top. It's Bobby Hackle trying to work the bottom on Austin Hubbard. Larry White, though, scooting around the top side. White to fourth. Now Larry White trying to grab the third spot away. Stop me if you've heard this before. Lightning Larry's ripping the top. Yeah, how about that? Oh, he switched to the bottom, Chris. Slide job. Slide job on Austin Hubbard. He's got third. Lightning Larry on the gas, lifting that left front pony wheel off the racetrack. Hackle has slid, who at one point had the lead, had to give it away on the caution, is now back in fifth. I'd imagine the 99L saw the leaderboard, saw the 9S at the top of it, and realized he couldn't waste any time. Larry driving it really hard for all it's worth right now. Larry White has gone from 11th to 3rd, and now trying to zero in on the 44 of Stuart Friesen. Austin Hubbard is 4th, you mentioned Hackle 5th. Rudolph sixth, Siri seventh, Tanner Van Dorn is eighth, Mark Johnson ninth, and Rick Laubach rounds out the top ten. Here's Shepard leading the way, followed by Friesen, White, then Hubbard next in line. 
Larry White still running that high line into the turn. Trying to catch up to second place, Stewart Friesen. Meanwhile, Hubbard not letting Larry White run away to hide. This time by will be the 13th lap. 13 complete, still 27 to go. The 9S two for two so far on the week. In the early going, looking good for three for three, but we are a long way from Pater. As we are seven laps from the halfway mark, you see White working within about five car lengths of the 44 of Stuart Friesen. White knocking down the walls. Friesen maybe a groove and a half off the wall. Again, I would imagine the 44 may be saving his stuff at the moment, Jeff. We'll see. You know how much the track changed in the last 15 laps of the last night's 35 lap modified feature. Of course, we didn't start quite as wet as we did tonight. We'll see how it turns out. Here comes White in third. Hubbard hovering right behind him. Hackle and Rudolph is there as well. Yeah, I don't think Larry White very much believes in conserving your stuff. <laughs> Larry's getting after it. Austin Hubbard, though, coming after him. Larry searching around the racetrack, and lap traffic is on the horizon for the 9S of Matt Shepard. That's another thing Friesen might be doing, just biding his time, trying to keep the 9S in his vision and hoping lap traffic will bring the 9S back to him. We will see right now third, fourth, fifth, and sixth are all pretty well within distance of each other if anybody makes a mistake. We've watched Matt Shepard race a lot. He usually does not like to rip the lip. He likes to run more conservative on the bottom. He is really running the outside in three and four, but runs low in one and two. That lap he could not because he had to work his way way past his first lap car. That was Zach Payne, and he's got a, a bunch of three lap cars coming up ahead of him now. Yeah, Shepard leading now. We start to close in on the halfway point, 18 complete. 22 to go in a three-car log jam in front of the 9S of Shepard. Gene Matthew Raymond, Seth Zacharias, and Danny Creeden are all battling in front of the 9S. How quickly can Shepard make work of them before the 44 can get to him? Gene Matthew Raymond is going to pull off the racetrack here on the home straightaway. Good news for the 9S. He'll go to the inside of Danny Creeden. Down the back straightaway, Larry White now looks like he's getting a little bit closer to Stuart Friesen and Bobby Hackle is really getting some pressure now from the 25 of Eric Rudolph down the straightaway this time it's the 9S of Matt Shepard with a pretty comfortable lead halfway home 20 down and 20 to go Larry White really putting the pressure on Friesen and a good battle back here between Hubbard Rudolph and Hackle and Rudolph just gained one Austin Hubbard Holding on to that fourth spot. Meanwhile, you see Larry and Freeze in there. There's Hubbard, Rudolph, and Hackle. Rudolph by Hackling into the fifth spot. Now Rudolph trying to close in on Austin Hubbard for the fourth spot. Interesting to see all the different ways these guys up front trying to get around the racetrack. Rudolph starting to close in on Hubbard now for fourth. Freeze has oh, got Friesen. a problem. He might have a flat tire. Stuart Freeze moving slowly down the front straightaway. This will draw the caution flag. Our second place car, Stuart Friesen, popping a left side rear tire. Left rear tire going down on the Hallmar 44. And Stuart Friesen. No, it's not a flat tire. Chris, looking from the infield camera. Yeah, it's a it broken shock. It is a shock. suspension. Yep. Suspension issue on the 44. 70A of Alex Payne. I just saw duck off to the pit area as well. Wow. The Hallmar 44. Don't Suffer. rule him out. I saw this at the Fonda 200 a couple of years ago. He made contact with a lap car, had a right rear flat tire and a broken right rear shock. They got them both changed, and he went back on to win the Fonda 200. Yeah, the screw guys are going to have to work quickly, but I'm sure they've already got the left rear shock in hand, jack ready to go. It's just a couple of bolts to put, yep. take the shock off and put the new one on. All right, so Shepard, the leader. Now, Lightning Larry will be right there with him on the restart. And we just <laughs> have you seen this this week, Jeff? Is is this Groundhog Day? <laughs> uh, 
It's the late and Larry. How about Austin Hubbard? Yeah. How about Austin Hubbard? This was a guy who was a super late model driver and a good at, at a very young age. Yeah. He was a very good one and decided to come off the traveling tour. You know, he's got a family now and all that, and he got hooked up with his modified team, and he's been racing locally in Delaware, and, you know, he wasn't a modified driver, but he's really making it work, and I'll tell you, last year he had some decent outings, and they come down here again this year, and uh, they've been working at it, working at it, working at it. He's been very impressive. And we've mentioned it more than once. That is a 467 cubic inch big block under the hood, and Austin Hubbard is more than making it work he excuse me he is 100 percent wheeling that thing and he was hanging right with larry white there third and fourth hubbard was not letting the 99l drive away but we will see so we're gonna check that something out here eric rudolph 44 freezing is done jeff freezing is done yep. rudolph had a sixth and a fourth so far this week Rudolph's had a pretty good night tonight. Shepard picks the top for the restart. He'll fire first. Down the chute we go back to green. Here comes Siri back into the picture now with a five-star. He'll be outside of Hubbard. Hackles in the mix again. And now Batman. Where did he come from? Peter Britton. Peter Britton told me your missus gave me some mojo. Peter Britton on the move right now. Trying to work into the top ten. Remember, started in ninth. He told you in the redraw, I've never been so happy to make a redraw. Peter Britton looking for more than that. Meanwhile, Rudolph trying to take the runner-up spot away from Larry White down the backstretch. And he just did going into turn number three. He slides by uh, the 99 of Lightning and Larry going into the corner. And Eric Rudolph now picks up position number two. The only guy that's been able to pass the 99 this week has been the 9S. Not anymore. Rudolph drives by Larry White. And now Rudolph into the runner-up spot. Larry trying to hang with him. Rudolph running a little bit of a different line. Larry trying to cross him over. Yellow lights again for the doctor. Slow over in turn number two. Caution is out. We've had more cautions tonight than we've had in the first two nights combined. Yeah, definitely. And Danny Johnson heading back to the pit area uh, right front. That's what it looks like right from front, here. Right flat tire. Yeah, they have had some contact with an equipment tire or another car, causing the tire to go soft. Purse money goes up, Jeff. Guys start driving a little harder. So what are I you guess. saying tomorrow night? Oh, hopefully not. So Matt Shepard will have a new challenger. Last restart, it was Larry White. This time, it is Eric Rudolph. Well, don't be surprised by this. I mean, Eric Rudolph won the first year back in 2020. He won the $10,000 prize here at Alltech, then won again the opener at Bubba. Bubba's the yep. next year. The one we had, the one year we had the Sunshine Swing at yep. Bubba's. So he can get it done. He's good on this dirt, right? This Everybody talks about how much different the dirt and the clay is down here. Rudolph can get it done on it. The lights are still on for the doctor. So Light and Larry looked like he was on his way to the front to go challenge. Shepard had his trouble with freezing. Larry could not get by Stu. Stu broke and pulled in. And then eventually Eric Rudolph was able to get by Larry White. Austin Hubbard still up there. He's in fourth. Hackles fifth. P Peter Britton is in sixth. And Siri and Tanner Van Doren next in line. Peter Britton started back in ninth position. He's currently in sixth. Then we got Siri and Van Doren, Mark Johnson, and Rick Laubach. Laubach started this race back in 20th position. Looking to be one of his better now outings tonight. Danny Johnson back on the racetrack. Once again, leader picks the top. We'll see. Can anybody make anything happen on that bottom groove to try and hang with the 9S? Rudolph going to try something. He'll go way to the bottom. Green is out, and we go back to it. Back to green. Oh. And Larry, oh, three wide briefly for the lead as Shepard went really high going into turn number one and two. And Larry will drive by Rudolph and regain second. Larry got a good jump, got alongside Rudolph. And then Rudolph tried to shut the door on him, and Larry said, no, sir, I'm right here. I will grab the runner-up spot away. So now Larry White back to second, Rudolph to third, Bobby Hackle fourth, 
Austin Hubbard rounds out the top five. Then Britton and Johnson battling back there in sixth and seventh. Here is your top two now. It is Shepard and White. Then Rudolph in fourth spot is Hackle. Fifth is now Hubbard. Mark Johnson battling Peter Britton. Johnson beginning to come to life now. Oh, we got Hubbard a little high in the corner. He'll scrub off a little speed. Mark Johnson and Peter Britton are right behind him. Yeah, Hackle threw a slide job at Hubbard. Hubbard had to check up going into the corner. Motored off the corner, though, and able to maintain the spot. Johnson, meanwhile, Mark Johnson starting to roll that bottom side really well. He's shaking off Peter Britton for sixth, and now starting to close in on Austin Hubbard. Mark Johnson trying to crack the top five. Remember, he finished in the top five on Wednesday night, was the hard charger last night, went 25th to 7th, now trying to get back to the top five tonight. Just 12 more trips around all Tech Raceway. Yeah, Mark Johnson is in sick, but look, we got a new battle developing behind him. It's Britton and then Danny Varon. Where did he come from? He hasn't been in the top 10 all night. Danny Varon now in the BDR Speed, Charlie Tibbetts. Masonry 0-1 into the corner, followed by the other 0-1, Tanner Van Doren, then... The four, uh, make that the five of Siri, Lawbach in the seven and the 12, Darren Smith, who's coming from the Conti. Yep. You mentioned Danny Varon. He just picked off another one. Britton washed up the racetrack. Varon crossed him over. Meanwhile, here's Mark Johnson. I told you he was rolling the bottom. He is closing in on Austin Hubbard. Hubbard, though, has dropped down in front of him. They'll both roll the bottom and try and reel in Bobby Hackle, who sits in fourth. Hackle's pounding the top side, trying to get back to Eric Rudolph. Nobody, though, much has been the story all week. Nobody with anything for Matt Shepard or Larry White. Yeah, those two are now beginning to pull away from the rest of the field. Third and fourth now, Rudolph and Hackle. Hubbard fifth, soon to get a little pressure from Johnson. Barron is closing quickly on them. Barron running the rim, as is Hubbard. Johnson glued to the bottom. Behind them is still some entertaining action going on between Britton, Van Doren, Laubach in the mix there with Tyler Seary and Darren Smith, who's continuing to gain positions. This race track, oh, Larry White throwing sparks off the wall. White starting to push a little bit harder, trying to get to the 9S. This racetrack tonight is put your big boy pants on, put the race car against the cushion, and rip around the top side of the speedway. Shepard doing it to perfection. Jeff, you said it. He doesn't always like to do it. He's typically a guy who likes to feed around the bottom, but he's got that INS dialed in tonight. Shepard putting the race car wherever he wants it now in lap traffic again. He'll go three wide off the corner. That's the second time that I met Shepard. Made a two-car pass on the outside groove coming out of four. Got by two lap cars there. Does Matt Shepard. Larry White still giving chase down the back straightaway this time by. We'll get the five lap signal. Five more trips around All Tech Raceway. The lead two seconds for Matt Shepard. The few lap cars around him right now are all working the bottom. So the 9S, no problems there right now. Shepard. Well out in front, working comfortably. White, Rudolph, Hackle, a good battle, though, for the fifth spot right now. Austin Hubbard has it, and here comes Danny Varon. Varon ripping off at turn number two, side by side for the five spot. Varon in the preferred groove right now up on the top. Varon battling now to the outside of Austin Hubbard out of the corner. Varon got Mark Johnson a couple of laps ago, now moving out at Austin Hubbard, heading into turn number one. That is a good battle for a top five spot. Varon started way in the back of the pack. Yeah, Varon drew the BA Custom Headers redraw worst number, got the 12, trying to crack the top five on Hubbard. They have had about as bad a week as anybody from broken water pump on night one to a blown engine on night two. They've got the backup in, and Varon trying to crack the top five. Meanwhile, Shepard and Moore lap traffic. Twin sticks in the air. Shepard's got nearly a straightaway back to Larry White. Matt Shepard looking for his third win of the week in lap traffic, but he's got a comfortable lead. We will take the Barron's Performance Warehouse white flag. One to go. One more trip around All Tech Raceway. He entered this week with one sunshine swing victory. Came back in 22. He will work off a turn number two, looking for three in a row to open 24. Final circuit of Sunshine Swing night number three for 2024. He plays a conservative out of turn number four on the bottom this time. Matt Shepard will win the Friday night portion of the Sunshine Swing. 
Larry White will grab second. Rudolph will grab third. Fourth spot will be Hackle. Fifth spot is Hubbard, followed by Varon and Mark Johnson. Darren Smith, Peter Britton, Laubach, Tanner Van Doren, and Rusty Smith. So night number three of the Sunshine Swing, the Capital Custom Coaches and Trailers Sunshine Swing for 2024, and taking home the win for the third night in a row, Super Matt Shepard. This will be a bit of a history-making event for Matt Shepard. Matt coming into the season... The number two man on the all-time win list behind Stuart Friesen with 38 wins. Wednesday was 39. Thursday was 40. Tonight is 41 career wins. And tying him now with Stuart Friesen for the top spot on the all-time short track Super Series win list. So Matt Shepard setting some history, personal history, I guess you could say. Series history as well. He ties Stuart Friesen for the number one spot on the all-time win list in short track Super Series history with career win number 41. Matt Shepard now pulling into Bicknell Racing Products Victory Lane. Runner-up behind Matt Shepard, the 99L Larry White. Third, the 25, Eric Rudolph. Fourth, the 97, Bobby Hackle. And fifth, the 65 of Austin Hubbard. Sixth, the 01, Danny Varon. Seventh, the 9, Mark Johnson. Eighth, the 12 of Darren Smith. Ninth, the 21, A, Peter Britton. And tenth was the 7 of Rick Laubach. We'll go down and have a word with our top three finishers in Bicknell Racing Products Victory Lane. A $5,000 win on Wednesday, a $6,000 win on Thursday, 40 laps tonight paying $8,000 to the winning driver. And it's been a trifecta so far for the driver out of Savannah, New York. He took the Short Track Super Series by storm last year, winning the North Region and the South Region point titles. And he's getting 24 kicked off to a great start with his third win in three nights. Bicknell Racing Products, Victory Lane. He's ready to exit the car. Here is Matt Shepard. Matt Shepard picking up the 40-lap win tonight. Well, Matt, and they've all three have been a little bit different for you. Last night was the wild duel down to the wire. Tonight was a little bit different, uh, a lot more cautions, kept regrouping the field, not so much lap traffic. You started further back than you did any of the other nights, but uh, you still use the outside, which you don't often use, but uh, it worked to perfection, and here you are again. Yeah, uh, honestly, tonight really surprised me. Uh, track conditions were quite a bit different. There was, uh, you know, a big old top tonight, and uh, I, I was surprised. This car was outstanding, uh, probably the best it's been all week. Um, you know, I took off early, and I got up on that top in three and four and was able to really make some headway and kind of learned from Larry this week that uh, – can't just ride around the bottom all week. You got to get up top and go sometimes. And, uh, you know, I, I thought I'd give the top and, and one and two a try on that one restart. And, you know, to my surprise, the top of two really came in. It was probably the best part of the track at the end. So I kind of shift my lane to, to the top at both ends. And then at the at the very end, I actually think the bottom in three and four was a little bit better. It swapped around. But I uh, can't say enough about this race car, this whole team. Um, all my sponsors, all my family and crew, and everybody come down. My dad come down today, and the rest of my crew. And uh, you know, the victory lane pictures looked a little slim the, the last couple nights, but I'm sure this picture will be full tonight. Tell us uh, the two ends of the track, because so many of you guys don't run the extreme outside in one and two like you do in three and four. Are they very different? 
Yeah, it's it's two totally different corners. Um, the track really changed during the race. I mean, it was pretty bottom do dominant in one and two and top dominant in three and four. And I would say at the very end, it kind of flip flopped and it was top dominant in one and two. And, and you know, the bottom of three and four was coming in pretty good there. Um, you know, another awesome job with the with the racetrack here. Uh, you know, it's been racy. Uh, I didn't. It was a little uh, slow start there. A lot of cautions and a lot of a lot of melees going on. But they've thrown something a little different at us each night. And uh, you know, the racing's been outstanding. Uh, hasn't been touching tires. It's been easy on the tire bill this week. So uh, you know, um, we'll take it. We're excited. Uh, come to Florida, win three races, three in a row. Um, somebody pinch me. One other thing I want to tell you. Three wins now, you're tied for the top spot on the all-time win list. So uh, you've been racking them up here the last couple of years. You know, you've been winning the point titles and all that, but you've also been getting a lot of feature wins too. Yeah, we have. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I think tonight might be career win 499. So we're, we're looking for 500. We didn't think we'd come to Florida and have a shot at it, but uh, I guess, uh, you know, we still got some racing to do. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Matt Shepard, your winning driver. He takes home the 40-lap win. In Bechdel Racing Products Victory Lane tonight, taking the $8,000 paycheck here at All Tech Raceway in the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches, Sunshine Swing, night number three. Larry White, well, I'll tell you, you, you had to come a little bit further back again, but uh, right in the mix there one more time. Yeah, you know, the car was good tonight. Uh, I think uh, we might have made a couple of the wrong changes. We didn't quite have the, the forward traction down the straightaways that we did last night, so... Uh, We'll go back to our notes and uh, dial it back a little bit and uh, try to get get another shot at it here on the last night. But uh, I can't I can't thank Cole and Jake enough. Uh, we've done a lot of hard work this winter, and uh, you know it's it's all paying off finally. And uh, gotta thank uh, all my sponsors: FX Prera, uh Gypsum Express, Gypsum Wholesalers, uh, my guys back home towing and uh, Big Red Towing, Napa Auto Parts, Tracy Road Equipment, uh, Jammer Sports Bar. Uh, Bicknell race cars, LGL Kevlar engines, um, <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, the, the most important part of it is the family that's behind uh, all these teams down here, and uh, I definitely got the lucky side of that with uh, my wife and two girls. Absolutely. You know, one thing, you know, tonight we started out a little wetter, but we had more laps tonight. The track really did start to come to like it normally is, so sometimes it always amazes me how you guys can set your car up to act differently during the middle of a race, so was it changing to what you wanted it to do later on? Yeah, you know, it actually uh, changed a little more than I thought it was going to. Uh, I, I thought there was going to be more of a bottom off of four, and uh, it seemed that you could get good bite all the way through there, and then as soon as he got to the straightaway, it kind of just went away. So, uh, you know, that kind of hurt our setup a little bit, but we were able to rally on the top and make it happen. Good run. Thank you. All right, Larry White, he's your number two man tonight in Bicknell Racing Products Victory Lane. Eric Rudolph right in the mix again. You get a podium tonight, so you guys are really doing some good things this week. Yeah, it seems like uh, every night we improve just a little bit, and uh, we still got a night to go, and, uh, you know, happy with how the car's been, and, uh, you know, all the help that the crew's been giving me. We've been trying to get a little bit better, and it seems to be working, and, uh, you know, whatever we're doing seems to be going in the right direction, and, uh, like I said, we got one more night, and uh, maybe tomorrow night will be your night. Yeah, well, you won one of those already, right? Those $10,000 races. Oh, yeah, it was a few years ago now, but, um, you know, I mean... It's anybody's guess what the track's going to be like tomorrow, but uh, we'll come back with a positive attitude and uh, see what we got. Good run tonight. Hey, thank you very much. All right, Eric Rudolph, your third-place finisher tonight. He's going to go up and get in the picture. Eric Rudolph is third, Lightning Larry White second, and your winning driver once again in Bicknell Racing Products Victory Lane is Matt Shepard, his third win of the week, three for three, and his 41st career Short Track Super Series modified win, tying him with Stuart Friesen on top of the win list. Next up, we remember Shirley Zacharias with the Shirley Shootout. 602 Sportsman will be going for 30 laps, 2,500 to win. We'll go back to Chris Moore. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. One more time, Matt Shepard, the winner. Larry White, second. Eric Rudolph, Bobby Hackle, and Austin Hubbard, the top five. Danny Varon, Mark Johnson, Darren Smith from the Concy, Peter Britton, and Rick Laubach round out the top ten for tonight's 40-lap Short Track Super Series modified main event. As he mentioned, the Shirley Shootout for the STSS Crate 602 Sportsman set to roll out 30 laps, $2,500 to win. 
They'll line up this way. Pole position out of Middletown, Delaware. The Eric Corman owned 16S. That's Tom Moore, Jr. And alongside of him out of Addison, New York, the 5K, Kenny Peoples, Jr. Row two inside out of Spencertown, New York, a former Sunshine Swing champion, the 89, Dylan Madsen. And alongside of him out of Mount Upton, New York, the 23 of David Dickey. Rolling off fifth out of Boston Spa, New York, the 49, Chris Jakubiak. And going from sixth out of Galloway, New Jersey, the 73, Paulie Hartwig, the third. Daryl Nutting out of Malta, New York, in the number 42 car will roll off seventh. And going from eighth out of Hermitage, Pennsylvania, is the 5C of Aiden Cipriano. Row five inside out of Johnstown, New York, the 21C, Brian Calabrese. And going from tenth out of South New Berlin, New York, the opening night winner, the 14T, Peyton Talbot. Joe Toth out of, uh, excuse me, out of Upper Makefield, Pennsylvania, in the 14 car will go from 11th to Tanner Warner out of Gloversville, and the 5EJ will roll off 12th. Out of Drummondville, Quebec, out of Jan Boussier in the 21 car starts 13th, and going from 14th out of Saratoga Springs, New York, is the 27 of Michael Ballestero. 15th starting spot out of Madison, New York, the 26 of Matty Brodell, 26B of Matty Brodell, and going from 16th out of Milford, Delaware, is the 17T of Chris Thompson. Row 9 inside at Aquichi, Vermont, the 813 Jason Quenville, and alongside of him at a Waterville, New York. At a Waterville, New York, rolling off 18th is the 11 of Nick Zielinski. 19th starter out of Quebec, Canada is the 61 of Donovan, 61L, Donovan Lucier, and alongside of him, also out of Quebec, the 85, David Langoy. 21st starting spot out of Cornwall, New York, the 38, Kevin Stevens. And alongside of him, last night's winner out of St. Catharines, Ontario, the 72, is James Friesen. 23rd starting spot out of South Plainfield, New Jersey, driving the 29 car is Matt Ellery. And going from 24th out of Quebec is the 28 of Eric Lozier. 25th starting spot out of Pittsfield, Massachusetts, is the 6 of John Santolin. And the final starting spot, hailing out of Chelsea, Quebec, is the 22C of Cedric Gavreau. That is the way they will line up. Again, we remember Shirley Zacharias for 30 laps and $2,500 to win. $1,300 for second, $900 for third. A good payout for the STSS Crate 602 Sportsman, Tom Moore Jr., Kenny Peoples Jr., Bring the field to green. We're off and running. We take the green with the Shirley shootout out of the corner down the back straightaway. And Tom Moore Jr. will be your early leader. Paulie Hartwick the third. Watch Larry White last night. He tried that line. Oh, we got one in the wall down in three and four. That was Joe Toth. He keeps it going. Everybody does. We stay green. Chris Jakubiak up to third. Jakubiak rolling the bottom. Here comes Madsen after TMJ for the lead. Down the back straightaway. Tom Moore Jr. and Dylan Madsen. Then we got Jakubiak and the 73 of Pauly Hartwig the third. Good action. Two by two by two out of the turn. Madsen able to work off the bottom side of turn number four. Dylan Madsen takes the lead away. Moore working through the middle. Jakubiak now digging to the bottom. Where did Peyton Talbot come from? Peyton Talbot started 10th. He's alongside Hartwick for fourth. Yellow lights are on. Car around in the middle of turns one and two. That's Jason Quenville in the 813. So Quenville, the car around. He will hustle around to the tail. And here's a replay. You saw a little four-car battle for second, and we just catch the tail end of it. And Quenville, everybody able to avoid him, so good job there from the sportsman. And uh, no problem, so Quenville tags the back, and we will keep all 26 cars on the racetrack.
on the initial start. They need to stay in line. So Hartwig going back one spot for pulling out a line over there in turn four on the initial start. So similar to our leader rule, right? The initial start leader is the inside front row and car. And you got to wait till the starting line. Right. After it's that. Not, it, it's not in the zone, in the restart right. zone. Rules, essentially, rules are a little bit different for the initial start versus restarts. Yep. So Talbot moving up quickly there. Yeah. Uh, he's in contention after that good battle up front between Tom Moore Jr. and Dylan Madsen. Madsen now leading. Madsen rolled the bottom well to take the lead. Talbot came out of the 10th position, so. He has been really fast this weekend. Here we go. Jakubiak and Moore. Hartwig and Talbot battling down the straightaway. Payton, whoa, on the outside. He drifts up the track a little bit. Now down the back straightaway. Three wide. Hartwig, Talbot, Jakubiak, and Moore. Talbot wasting no time trying to find some kind of racing room. While Moore shoves the nose to Kubiak, rolling the bottom side. He'll bring Paulie Hartwig with him. Moore trying to find a rhythm, rolling through that middle groove. Talbot will follow him to the top side, down in one and two. Here comes Darrell Nutting in the 42. Aiden Cipriano in the number five, down the back. Talbot getting a run now on Hartwig. Oh, man, where do we watch all too much action to keep track of? Here's Ballestero. Oh, Ballestero. Oh, I was just going to say Ballestero made a big move to the outside. Going into three, but he got too high into the concrete, up on the wall, and almost went over. Yeah, that was... It took another car with him, too, the 17T of Chris Thompson. I don't think Thompson made real hard contact. Man, I don't know if the guys in the truck got that one or not, but Ballestero was very dangerously close to going over down there. Yeah. He, he blasted down the back, looked like he had it set... For a good move into the corner, he was going to gain like three spots, and all of a sudden it just slid up to the wall, and he got sucked into the wall when climbed up the wall and almost went over. We will you see. know, those guys run so good. He runs so good. His crew works so hard. They have a lot of fun when they come down. They use this as a vacation. They've been here mm. every year yep. we've ever done this. But they always have some good finishes, and this year they just can't seem to get the monkey off their back. Yeah, he was... One of the two Crate 602 sportsmen who entered the weekend with multiple Sunshine Swing victories. He and Stephen Kemery, who was the 2021 champion. And I believe we still only have those two with multiple wins. Talbot and Friesen both getting their first wins in Florida. Friesen's his first ever with the Short Track Super Series. And Ballestero, the mistake going to cost him his night. The front end, it looks like. I thought... The right front always has a little bit of, of bend in it for when they set the car in the corners, but I thought the right front looked a little bit uh, a little bit too much. They're going to have to cut their time on the golf course short tomorrow. They'll have to <laughs> come and fix the race car. I can go golfing for them if, uh, okay. if that they works. They have a lot of fun. They're a good group. <laughs> good group. A lot of fun. So similar start here that we had to the modifies. It's a little bit sluggish. That's the one thing, we, if we didn't get to explain a lot to the people at home, when everybody is here for this week, they're here for the week. It's not like a normal race night where everybody right. shows up at 4 o'clock and you race and you go home and you don't see everybody for that long. We're here. They're here all day or most of the day, yeah. and you get to walk around and, and talk to everybody and spend some time with people, so you get to know people more or better or make new friends, and it's really cool. Or maybe it's, it's a unique week. Let's just put it that way. Maybe learn about people you don't like, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just meet, meet new people that you <laughs> never got to talk too much before. Yeah. We got to talk a little bit to some of the Canadian teams. I went down and visited a couple yesterday, got the correct yeah. pronunciations. So You get a kid like Aiden Cipriano yep. out in western Pennsylvania. We don't see him at all. They were fun to talk to. But for the Sunshine to. Swing. Yep. He said they really like to make some big block races this year, so he's going to take another step in his career. Here we go. Hartwig pulls to the outside again. Here we go. Madsen and Jakubiak up front. Oh, here comes more Talbot and Cipriano. It's an all-out shootout going to turn one. A Shirley shootout, if you will, Jeff. Here yeah. goes Paulie Hartwig ripping the topside. Hartwig trying to do what Larry White showed. 
Hartwig will drive to the bottom now down here in three and four, and that leaves the top open for the 14 T. That's not what you want to do. Talbot trying to come after these top three. Yeah, and here comes Joe Toth now into the mix. Looks like we're losing one here. Calabrese. Brian Calabrese pulling off the track. Hartwig on the outside in second, battling with Peyton Talbot. Toth now getting by Cipriano and goes by the 16S of Tom Moore Jr. We now have a three-car battle brewing for the number one spot. I'm telling you, leaving the top side open for the 14T is dangerous. Talbot now will cross over. Paulie Hartwig the third. Hartwig, he's not afraid of the top side, though. He'll go up there. Down in one and two, Talbot slides up in front of him. Talbot takes the runner-up spot away from the youngster. Into the turn, Madsen still leading the way. Talbot on the outside of Hartwig will grab second. Toth now fourth, Cipriano fifth. Then Jakubiak has slid back a couple spots, as has Moore. David Dickey, James Friesen. Remember, he qualified through the Conci. Last night's winner, he's now into the top ten. Yeah, you thought that he would be a factor. He would start to march forward. He's certainly going to be in play for the Belmont's Garage Heart Charger Award, Will, the 72. Still a long way from home, though. Seven complete, 23 to go. Dylan Madsen leading. Talbot, Hartwick, Toth, and Cipriano, your top five. Dylan Madsen, a former Sunshine Swing champion back in 2022. Peyton Talbot, the current 24 Sunshine Swing point leader in the Wagner Automotive Championship chase. Talbot now trying to catch Madsen. Hartwick three. Toth putting some pressure on him. Cipriano, then Jakubiak. Moore, Dickey, Friesen, Luzier. And behind him, we've got the 38 of Stevens. Really interesting this racetrack is. Last night when the modified feature ended, they were all working right around the bottom of the speedway. The sportsmen came out, and they all worked the top. Tonight, all the modifieds were rolling around the top, and a lot of the sportsmen running up front now are working the bottom. Yeah, not Hardwick. He's running the top. Down the back now, we got Talbot closing in on Madsen. Madsen is glued to the bottom like a slot car. I don't know. Did they move those tires in? They never <laughs> looked like they bounced before, almost like they're running on the edge of the infield over there. I don't know. I didn't see that the first two nights. But uh, here comes Hartwig. He's got her wound up on the top. We got one slowing. That's John Boussier. Yeah. Looks like he's going to go to the infield now. Yeah, if he can make it here off of turn number four, he should be able to make the left turn. He will. We will stay green. We complete lap number 11 this time. And, and Talbot is within just a couple of car lengths of Dylan Madsen. And Paulie Hartwig is rolling the top side. Hartwig closing in. Madsen misses the bottom. Here's Talbot for the lead. Yeah, Talbot making a move now down the back straightaway on Madsen. Lap traffic ahead. And Hartwig, who had been running to the top, goes to the bottom. He's closing right in. Out of the corner. Lap traffic ahead. Madsen now knows Talbot's there. He showed the nose. He's got a challenge now. Madsen goes in a little higher, but Talbot is going to try extra high. I don't know if the middle's where you want to be. You might have to get all the way around the top. Quenville will go to the infield. John Santolin able to stay on the bottom. Madsen right through the middle. Talbot's there as well. Hartwig's way up on the top. Joe Toth isn't quite out of the picture either, Jeff. Four cars all within less than a half a straight away of each other for the lead. Yeah, the Shirley shootout is definitely that. Ta Here comes Talbot again to the inside, down the back straightaway. Here comes Hartwig. Throw a blanket over the top three into turn three. Toth hoping they continue to go at it so he can get in on the fun. It is fun right now. Talbot, though, will muscle away the lead off at turn number four. Move the 14-T to the top spot. Now where does Madsen go? He slides up to the top. Hartwig has to jump on the binders, and Talbot's going to scoot away. Yeah, Talbot pulls away very quickly. It looked like Hartwig wanted to make a run to the outside of Madsen, but Madsen slid over and blocked him off. Now Joe Toth is in the mix. Toth now... Moving in the challenge, Hartwig and Madsen with Talbot opening up a little daylight as the leader. Hartwig will not give up on that top groove. Toth says, okay, uh, you leave the bottom open. That's where I'll head. Toth trying to become a factor with the 73. Talbot going back to work. More lap traffic on the horizon. Talbot right down to the bottom trying to pull away from Madsen. We are past the halfway point, 16 complete. 14 to go, and Talbot's got a second and a half back to Dylan Madsen. Oh, yeah. Toth. Toth pushed on entry and got into the wall. He keeps it going. We will continue on. He keeps it going, but he lost ground now on that what was a three-car battle for second between himself, Hartwig, and Madsen. 
Here comes Talbot now working lap traffic down the front straightaway. Cipriano now moving it on Toth. Cipriano trying to catch Toth for that fourth spot behind him. Jakubiak, James Friesen, Tom Moore Jr., Donovan Lucier, Kevin Stevens, Tanner Warner, and Cedric Gavro. Yeah, Kevin Stevens is in at the top 10 from 21st. Stevens started from 21st from the cons. He remember James Friesen from 22nd. He's up to 7th. Meanwhile, Talbot has got a lap car. Matty Brodell between himself and Dylan Madsen. Then Paulie Hartwig trying to close in on Madsen. Toth a distant fourth, then Cipriano, but Talbot right now rolling the bottom side. Might just have this one on cruise control right now. Well, we got oh. trouble in turn one and two. A couple oh. of cars right in front of Talbot. A couple of oh. lap cars got together. Peyton making some evasive action between the infield, the lap car that spun, and the uke tire. That was close for the 14T. Yes, it was. That Very was a close. moment right there. The Kodak moment. <laughs> yeah, that's we called it. My buddy Caleb Hart calls it something different at the Chili Bowl, but okay. <laughs> Kenny Peoples already in the infield a couple of laps ago. They had such a good week the last two nights, but Peoples now looks like he's heading pit side. The Woodhull Raceway hot shoe not having a good night tonight. After he did make the redraw, ran well in his heat, so Peoples is going to take it in. There's Matt Ellery on your screen at home on Flow Racing the. Reason for the yellow, he went around, but nobody made contact. He was able to keep going. 18 laps complete, 12 laps to go. And Dylan Madsen and Pauly Hartwig, who were desperately trying to keep pace with your leader Talbot, are now going to get an opportunity Madsen alongside, Paulie Hartwig right behind, and then you've got Joe Toth. I don't know what Madsen's going to do, but, Jeff, I'd be willing to bet that the 14 of Toth is going to send it in on the wall. Yeah, well, one and two. if you stay close to it, it doesn't hurt so hard when you hit it, right? <laughs> he learned that already. Yes. So, Dylan Madsen. Has two career wins here at Alltech in February of 2023 and one at Georgetown last August. Peyton Talbot, his first short track Super Series win at Utica, Rome, July of 2021. Fonda, July of 2023. Fonda in September of 2023 won both series races at Fonda last year and then won here on Wednesday night. So he has four career SCSS wins and never won a Sunshine Swing event till Wednesday. Looking for Career win number five on the Short Track Super Series. He picks the top for the restart. Madsen alongside. Hartwig's right there. Cipriano, Toth, and James Friesen, who struggled in qualifying, came out of the Concy. Friesen making a bid for the top five. Jeff, I was wrong. It was Paulie Hartwig who switched grooves to the top. He went after Dylan Madsen. Matson able to take the lead away off the outside, shuts the door on Talbot into turn number three, and Dylan Madsen is your leader now with 11 laps to go. Madsen able to outgun Talbot. Talbot had, whoa, we got one in the fence here in the front. It's Tom Moore Jr. Yellow will be coming on. I just took my eyes off the leaders for a moment because I wanted to look and see where Friesen had started because Talbot had the a full car length or more on. Madsen coming off a of four to the green. Be interesting if we could get a replay on that last restart. How Madsen was able to slip by Peyton Talbot. But James Friesen, last night's winner, started from 22nd starting spot. He is now challenging for a top five. Wow. Yellow out, 19 down, 11 remaining in the Shirley shootout. Remembering Shirley Zacharias. An extra purse money line. Remember, all heat winners tonight in the sportsman division got 100 bucks tonight from the Zacharias family. So thanks to them for that. All four heat winners, Joe Toth, Chris Jakubiak, Brian Calabrese, and Aiden Cipriano all picking up 100. Here's our replay for the restart. So Talbot 
had the edge coming down the straightaway, but Madsen just threw it into the corner on the bottom and just walked away out of turn number two. That was incredible. Surprised by the decision there from Talbot to choose the top. The bottom has been the preferred groove. Talbot maybe thought he could get something working down the hill. Well, Madsen picks the bottom because he got the lead there, so we go back to green. Whoa! Oh! A couple of cars off the wall here. That was Cipriano and Hartwig got together briefly. Friesen going by Toth. So does Donovan Lucier. Talbot rolled the top off of two, Jeff. Talbot takes the lead back away from Dylan Madsen. Unbelievable. These two have gone at it hot and heavy. Talbot this time didn't enter in the middle. He said, I'm going to the brown way to the top and drove around Matson. Now Matson skates through the middle. Here comes Paulie Hartwig for the runner-up spot. Hartwig making a bid for the two spot. Dylan Matson, the restart, the worst thing to happen to the 89. He's back to third now. Yeah, Talbot didn't just retake the lead from Matson. He's just walking away. And now Hartwig will go by Madsen, grab second. Cipriano got by Toth. Also is the 72 of Friesen. And now Donovan Lucier going by Toth. Cipriano now up to fourth. Friesen from 22nd is up to fifth. And how about Donovan Lucier? He's from 19th to sixth. Lucier's on the move as well. Here's Toth trying to work the outside, trying to take the fifth spot back from James Friesen. Friesen not letting him have it just yet. Aiden Cipriano starting to reel in the 89. Dylan Madsen, the race car, appears to have suddenly gone away on him as Toth goes around Friesen, takes the fifth spot back. Yeah, Toth got around Lucier, goes around Friesen. Now he's on the outside trying to battle with Aiden Cipriano. I, I think they're racing a lot lower than they usually are. I don't remember them bouncing down there like they are tonight. I think they might have cut the corner in the infield down here. Uh-oh, Toth is bouncing off the wall again, and that will allow... James Friesen to scoot by and regain the position. Toth not afraid to work it up against the wall. Six laps to go for Peyton Talbot. He's got this time by almost three seconds back to Paulie Hartwig. Dylan Madsen is third in a three-car battle. A good three-car battle for fourth. Toth shoves the nose really hard again. Donovan Lucier gets underneath of him, and James Friesen's coming after Aiden Cipriano for fourth. Peyton Talbot continuing to lead the way. He's got a half a straightaway now on Paulie Hartwig. Hartwig in the number two spot. Madsen is in third. Cipriano's in fourth with a wounded race car. The right side of his car brushed off the concrete on that oh, lane. Toth. Oh, Toth headed right for the fence down here. Somehow he saved it. I think something's broke on the 14. Yeah, he is slow down the back straightaway, and the yellow lights are going to come on. That was the second straight turn that the car pretty much went straight into the turn one wall. I think something, front end, rear end, either way, something is not right on the 14 of Toth. And he slows to bring out the yellow and presumably will head into the pit area. Yeah, something either not handling right or after clipping the wall a couple of times, something then ended up breaking. Not the finish Joe wanted. He came up up there from... See, where did he start? He started in 11th, and he was up there in the fourth spot, but uh, not quite to be. So this caution flag will regroup the field again after the back and forth, back and forth between Talbot and Madsen on those last couple of restarts. Peyton Talbot apparently said, I had enough of this and, <laughs> and took off. Well, And Hartwig then was able to scoop by Madsen and pick up the number two spot. Again, the Shirley shootout, remembering Shirley Zacharias. Let's get our sheet out here and look. It's $2,500 to the winner. Twenty five hundred to win, thirteen hundred for second, nine hundred for third for the top three. Additionally, again, we mentioned just in the last caution, each heat winner tonight got a hundred dollars. Thank you to the Zacharias family for making this bonus program possible. The matriarch of the Zacharias family, Shirley Zacharias, and remember tonight here at the Sunshine Swing with a generous bonus program for the Shirley shootout. Mrs. Zacharias passed away January of 2013, but is fondly remembered by family and friends to this day. So tonight, we salute 
Shirley Zacharias, and I'll tell you what, Chris, these guys have certainly saluted her in a great way. What a race this has been. Yeah, we've had a lot of lean changes, and we might not be done. Talbot took the lead the last time, going to the top, pounding the top. Then he switched to the bottom out in front. So where will he go in one and two? And I can guarantee, I can almost guarantee, I was wrong last time. See if I make up for it this time. I'd be willing to bet the 73 is going whatever direction the 14T doesn't. Yep, five to go, 25 down, so we go to a single file restart. Talbot, Hartwig, Madsen, Cipriano, Friesen, the first five. Lucier next in line. Out of the corner behind Lucier, we've got Stevens, Gouvreau, Warner, and Jakubiak. We go back to green. Hartwig didn't get a great restart. Talbot pulled him by a couple of car lengths. They both roll the top. Madsen tried the bottom. They separate themselves a little bit from the 89, but Talbot's opened up some daylight. Aiden Cipriano driving it in deep on the top side down in three and four. I think this is the first time this week the top might be a little bit better in one and two than it is in three and four, Jeff. We're inside of five laps to go. Yeah, Matt Shepard mentioned that in the post-race modified Bicknell Racing Products victory lane interview. Here comes Cipriano now. He'll run that outside lane in one and two, battling now with Dylan Madsen for that third spot. I think Cipriano just going the top all the way around the speedway. Even if it's not as good in three and four, he keeps his momentum up, and that's able to allow one and two to be that much better of a corner for him. Madsen slides up off the bottom, but Cipriano bobbles just a little bit, and Madsen has the third spot. Twin sticks in the air, the 14T. The late race restart not affecting Peyton Talbot. Yes, Cipriano still battling with Madsen, and Donovan Lucier is really putting the pressure on James Friesen followed by Cedric Gouvreau. We've got three Canadian drivers battling there for the last spot in the top five. We'll get a white flag this time. The Bears Performance Warehouse white flag. One to go for Peyton Talbot. Bears Performance Warehouse white flag for the 14T looking for his second win of the weekend and another short track Super Series win for Peyton Talbot. Down the back straightaway and into three and four for the final time. We'll get a checkered flag for the second time this week. A sunshine swing. Win will fall to Peyton Talbot. Runner-up will be Hartwig. Third will be Madsen. Then Cipriano followed by Friesen. Lucier, Gavreau, Stevens, Tanner Warner, and Jakubiak. That will complete the Shirley shootout for the 602 Sportsman. And that will complete tonight's racing program. So the Shirley Zacharias, Shirley shootout in the record books tonight here at All Tech Raceway. And what a battle it was. We'll go down to Bicknell Racing Products, Victory Lane in just a moment. Don't forget, one more night for the mighty Bob Bilber Sportswear, Short Track, Super Series, Big Blocks, Small Block, Modifieds, and 602 Sportsman. Tomorrow night, 30 lap, 2,500 to win Sportsman, and a 50 lap, 10,000 to win feature for the Modifieds. 50 laps, 10,000 to win tomorrow night. And we'll crown the Wagner Automotive Championship drivers in both the Modified and Sportsman Division. 1,000 to the Sportsman Champion, 1,500 to the Modified Champion from Wagner Automotive of Marquesan, Wisconsin. The Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches 2024 Sunshine Swing with another action-packed night here at Wendell Durrance's All-Tech Raceway. What a spectacular night. Those of you here at the track, thank you so very much for coming out. And joining us, what a night of action that has been after a beautiful day. Temperatures almost at the 80-degree mark and a very comfortable night in the upper 50s here tonight. So it's been getting warmer as the week has been going on. So Bicknell Racing Products victory lane coming up for Peyton Talbot. His fifth career short track Super Series win. Runner-up to the 73, Pauly Hartwig the third. Third will go to the 89, Dylan Madsen. Fourth, the 5C, Aiden Cipriano. And fifth to the 72 of James Friesen. Sixth will be the 61L, Donovan Lucier. Seventh, the 22C, Cedric Gouvreau. Eighth will be the 38, Kevin Stevens, ninth, the 5E of Tanner Warner, and 10th, the 49 of Chris Jakubiak. 
That's the top 10 rundown for the 602 Sportsman main event tonight. Again, we hope you enjoyed it. Another action-packed night here on the tricky half mile here at All Tech Raceway. Tomorrow night, we do it again one more time to complete the week of action. Both divisions, again, 30-lap feature for the Sportsman and a 50-lap 10,000-to-win finale for the Modifieds. And another forecasted beautiful day of sunshine and temperatures. It, the sun, fun, and speed continues for the 24 Sunshine Swing at All Tech Raceway. That is the nickname they give it, Sun, Fun, and Speed. And it certainly has been for a lot of people. Here he is, Peyton Talbot. Shirley shootout. And it was a shootout, Peyton. I'll tell you what. It was a battle. Back and forth, back and forth. Looks like you had the lead. Then all of a sudden, Dylan came out of nowhere. He got the lead. Looked like he was gone. Then a restart played into your hand, and then you took the lead, and then you were gone. Yeah, I think I was really overthinking on that one restart. You know, I was just uh, getting flashbacks to last night to where I got rolled on the restart. So I'm like, well, I'll take the outside. And then Dylan just rolled by me, and I'm like, we got we had that other other yellow and uh, I'm like well I got one more shot of this so I blasted it into the one and two, I uh, got enough on the diamond line to uh, just get even with Dylan I think maybe if he was at my left rear quarter and then I uh, could get him down into three but uh, this car was awesome I uh, can't thank Mike enough it uh, really really handled well. Tell us then of course you probably didn't want to see it five laps ago then we have one more caution although it was a single file restart but uh, so you didn't have to pick lanes but again to put everybody right behind you. Yeah, I was I was kind of concerned there. I, I need, didn't know where really where uh, Polly was. I uh, I know he likes to run the top a lot, so I tried to run the top down in one and two, and I actually messed up really really bad. Uh, you know, I actually probably got lucky down there. I got to watch the replay, but uh, this track so it's so weird. Um, it's so technical, but uh, you know uh, this uh, fast line performance 14 T is really good. You know, the modified drivers mentioned it's oftentimes top dominant at the. 3, 4 end, not so much in the 1 and 2 end, and it reversed itself tonight. Yeah, down in 3 and 4, I mean, I don't know. I never really tried the top a whole lot. I, I probably should have a couple times, but, uh, you know, once I got to the lead there, I really didn't want to move much, um, you know, until somebody showed me something, and, you know, I didn't want to get rolled by on the bottom. Uh, there was a little bit of a hole down in 3 and 4, but uh, this thing handled it well and uh, just came out on top. This has been quite a week for this team. You guys have been uh, really working hard, but the hard work's been paying off. A win, a second, and another win. Yeah, it feels great. I mean, especially uh, the the last few times we've been here, you know, we've we've been nowhere even near the top three. So uh, it definitely feels good. Good job. Enjoy it. Yeah, just real quick. I just got want. I just want to thank all my sponsors. I just got to thank Travis for this motor. Uh, this thing's really really good. Um, you know, Ted's Buy Shop, LMC, uh, Parker Excavating, Brodel Energy, uh, Rest Syndrome Research Trust, uh, Certified Auto, uh, Factory Fast Line Suspension, uh, Donath Motorworks, Dig Race Products, Terry's Custom Coatings. Uh, CC Carburetors, uh, Lord forgive me the opportunity and ability to be here. Um, just everybody that supports, everybody that watches, all my crew guys, uh, you know, they're, they're always uh, working hard. Um, you know, I think I got everybody. Uh, Swagger Factory, Henry's, uh, TBM, um, Jones, CJ Jones, I uh, missed him last time. So I told him, I said I wanted to, I wanted to get back in the lane so I could remember everybody. And, uh, you know, I think I got everybody, uh, Precision Hydraulic and Oil, uh, DMI, uh, Strange Oval, um, like I said, just everybody that helps, um, Brett and Heather for uh, for bringing us down here, and uh, you know we'll be back tomorrow. Good job, enjoy it. Thank you. There you go. The Shirley Shootout winner is Peyton Talbot. Wendell's going to come in here. Wendell Durance is going to come in and congratulate your winner in Bicknell Racing Products, Victory Lane. Well, Paulie Hartwig, this is your best finish of the week. But uh, oh, so close, very close, but a great, great night anyway. Yeah, I was starting to find the top there, you know, after we uh, got up there. And, you know, I was just never going to get up, never going to stop getting up there. You know, we, I went to the bottom that once. And I was like, no, this thing's not good. And I don't know, um, on that last restart, we spun the tires really bad. That's what messed up with the three car lengths. So, um, those are really big holes over there. It was messing me up pretty bad. But, um, you know, this chat, um, I didn't even know we were going to be up this far. But um, I got to thank all my guys. And then uh, I got to thank my lap sponsors, you know, Velocita, Hoffman, uh, 
Shore Contracting, South Car Care, Garden State All Body, Morgan Senior Race Engines, uh, Killer Crate, Surfside Collision, um, Morgan uh, Vazer Pools, uh, everybody else that helps, you know, Bobby busts his butt in the shop all the time, you know. We didn't know we were going to be up this far, but uh, we got it. Great run. And Keith, um, thank you, Ben. Good job tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, there you go. Polly Hardwick's got a good run tonight. He's got a second place. Dylan Madsen, well, podium again, but uh, you did have that number one spot for a little while. Yeah, I, I messed up bad there. Um, I thought the bottom was fast, and then Pey or Peyton goes around the top of me. Next restart, I go on the bottom of him. This place, you can't get a hold of it, and I love it. Yeah, this is crazy, isn't it? Because uh, th that time, oftentimes that end is top dominant. This end is not always, and it sort of reversed itself tonight, but you guys were using every inch of this racetrack trying to find the best way around. Yeah, um, I sort of felt good over here in three and four. One and two was definitely my struggle turn. I didn't know where to go over there. But you had that one last restart to try and make something happen. Yeah, um, that last restart wasn't bad. I, I clipped the uke tire over there, so uh, my guys are going to hate me now. I got a little more work to do. But, yeah, a third place is still a good night, isn't it? Yeah, not bad. I'll take it. Good run. Thank you. All right, Dylan Madsen, he's got a third tonight. He'll go up there and get in the pictures. Dylan Madsen gets third tonight. Second place is Paulie Hartwig, the third. And your winning driver in Bicknell Racing Products victory lane for the second time this week and the fifth time in his short track Super Series career is Peyton Talbot in Bicknell Racing Products victory lane. Again, tomorrow night, one more night for the Capital Custom Trailers and Coaches 2024 Sunshine Swing with the Bob Hilbert Sportswear Short Track Super Series Big Block Small Block Modifieds 50 lap feature, 10,000 to win along with a 602 Sportsman program, another 30-lap feature, 2,500 to win. Pit gates open at 3, grandstands at 5, we go hot lapping at 6, and racing starts at 7. Flow action begins for those at home watching on Flow at 6 p.m. Thanks to everyone here at the racetrack for joining us tonight. Everybody tuning in at home on Flow Racing, we thank you for your support as well of the Bob Hilbert Sportswear Short Track Super Series. For Chris Moore, Jeff Allen saying thanks for being here. Enjoy the